Hi, everybody. There won't be such a long pause this, this week. Uh, welcome to our streaming game of Acton Cthulhu. It's the 2D20 edition, and I'll be running Shadows of Atlantis, which is a campaign that we published a while back, but with a kind of tweak to the 2D20 system. We are getting ready to kick those Nazis right in the tentacles with this show. So welcome, uh, and welcome especially if you're watching on YouTube. We're live every Friday if you want to catch the live show as 5 p.m. Eastern or 10 p.m. GMT right until 1 a.m. until the war is over. Uh, so, without further ado, let me go around and uh, show you this lovely cast of people. Contestant number one, who are you and where are you from on the internet? We haven't prepared this. No one knows who could contestant one is. <laughs> For it, why don't we go around? For it, why don't you... There we go. You're muted. Again. Um... <laughs> So I'm a professional streamer, as you can tell. Uh, so I'm setting the bar pretty low, just so everybody else can walk right over it. I'm Pruitt, one half of WebDM, uh, where we do uh, some advice videos over there on YouTube. You should check it out sometime. Uh, we just got done with a with a pretty cool shoot uh, uh, here uh, in uh, Texas. So I'm excited to get to this uh, crazy Nazi tentacle kick in action. Uh, and I'm going to be playing Captain W.C. Ward uh, out of Kilgore, Texas, y'all. So uh, can't wait. I need to his first name because I've totally forgotten it. His name's William Christopher Ward. William uh, Christopher. I need to write that down. Buddy to his friends, uh, Captain to his subordinates. <laughs> Virginia Page, you are contestant number two. Where are you? I mean, hey. What do you do for kicks? <laughs> I, I do this for kicks. I my my life is games because uh, I also work for Modifius um, with Sam, uh, and you can find me at Tabletop Horde on Twitter, which is somewhere beneath my name there. Um, yeah, I I do role playing on here. Uh, I also role play on Sam's other stream for Casual D and D, um, and you can also find me at the Roleplay Haven, running games there. Yeah, man. If you're London-based and you want a actual live tabletop experience, then uh, head on over to one of their lovely venues. Um, they're at Secret Weapon in Stratford. They're at somewhere in Archway still. I'm not sure. Either way. Uh, yeah, London Archway and Lewisham. And then we've got yeah. Cardiff as well. So if you're in Wales, there's also Cardiff. Oh, but, yeah. uh, you, can feel, you can feel good about role-playing because we also raise money for charity while we do it. So it's all good. There you, go. you don't have to feel guilty about your gaming habit. <laughs> It's an awesome, awesome group to go. So, well, let's go over somewhere north now via Wales, I guess, over to Susie. Hello. Hey, up. I'm Susie. Right. <laughs> oh, God, I'm, I'm in character. Hi, I'm Susie, otherwise known as Susanna Grace, and you can find me ever on the internet at Susanna Grace. I am a variety streamer who is doing a heck of a lot of tabletop and roleplay stuff these days, uh, appearing on everybody's channels, uh, including this very one on Thursdays. I DM the viewer game, and it's very funny. You should watch it. Um, but yeah, so I do like art, video games, roleplay. I'm, I'm just everywhere. But I'm playing Elsie Braithwaite. Who's the grease monkey from Yorkshire? Oh, you can get in your little character in there. Good job. See, Pro professional, man. Pro professional. Professional. <laughs> Shauna, who are you? Why are you why are you holding a corgi? And where can we find you on the internet? Oh, hi, I'm Shauna. Shauna, sorry. Um, Flying series on Twitter. Do art and tabletop streams. And this is um our little uh mascot. Term uh, what was it? Sherman Tetley, Lord Little Corgi, and I'm playing uh, Sophia Price, one half of the Price Sisters. Awesome. Yeah, we got some sibling stuff going on as well, which is pretty cool. We just worked that out before stream. Uh, and then Callum, <laughs> you are final contestant. Uh, who Hello. are you and where are you and what are you doing? I am Callum, the host of the proudly London-based tabletop RPG podcasts of fans of RPG across the channel, the pond and beyond. Proud member of the RPG Academy network as well. And uh, yeah, you can find me at Rollispod. I won't be spelling it because it's French for role player. It's a bit complicated, but it's written right under me. And I will be playing Georges de Conanque. And uh, yeah, I cannot, I cannot wait to uh, have you all discover Georges. Awesome. I can't wait to discover to, him either. I need to work out. I did not practice prepare his voice at all, so I'm going to try stuff, I guess, tonight. 
So am I. I publicly apologize for any bad accents that come out of my mouth and any cultural appropriation that may happen. Um, no, seriously, I'm just, please don't judge me. Because um, uh, I am Sam and I also work at Modifius. I'm also one half of Black Cats Gaming um, and uh, I am helping develop this lovely game at work um, as well as various other cool co uh, lines like we do Star Trek Adventures, Conan in an Age I'm Dreamed Of, Infinity the Role Playing Game and all kind of stuff like that that we can chill on a later basis. I work with Virginia which is awesome. Will's invited me on here, it's fantastic. So really looking forward to it. Uh, so uh, if before we start, let's just go over a little bit of sponsorship stuff. Today we are using Fantasy Grounds for all our dice rolling needs and some handouts and stuff for the guys. So if you end, if you need a virtual tabletop, head over there to fantasygrounds.com uh, and you'll be able to get a demo version of that and then hopefully subscribe and uh, start forging your beautiful tabletop narratives on their virtual table. And then head over to whalinggames.co.uk if you need any miniatures from down the road in Essex from me. Uh, they've got all sorts of stuff from 40k to I guess Infinity as well and all that kind of cool stuff. Uh, they do a variety of different uh, products too on their web store. So go to whalinggames.co.uk, grab yourself a bargain. And then also we're sponsored by Tabletop Loot, which is a beautiful dice kind of manufacturer, provider, some fantastic stuff. Uh, we've got a competition going as well. If you do 20 retweets of the, the retweet that will be tweeted in your chat tweet thing, then uh, then we will give away one set of tabletop loot dice. So get retweeting, get us some audience. That would be awesome too. You can also donate in all sorts of cool, crazy ways. You can uh, give our players and myself as well some critical successes or some complications. Now, one key thing to remember here, because we're playing 2d20, is a roll under system. So ones are good and 20s are bad. So if you want to give a critical success to somebody, then you need to give them a 1. If you want to give a complication to somebody, then you need to give them a 20. Uh, you can give them to me as well, and I'll use them later on as well. Uh, we've also got the wild magic surges. Um, that are available for donation, and then we roll on like a D10,000 table or something, uh, and then there's lots of weirdness starts happening. Uh, and then of course we've got this month's special, the Table of Pets. We've already brought our own pet to the game, uh, so maybe add to that and, and Tetley will decide that it's it's not cool and we'll, we'll chase it off, I don't know. Um, speaking of magic surges, we all need to figure out, we, we all got a magic okay. surge, or you guys all got a magic surge last session, right? From someone right at the end of <laughs> of, the, of the session, like donated. We need to work out what that is, because I'm I'm none the wiser. <laughs> uh, yeah, I rolled mine last time, and I disgorged a vial that contained the antidote to any poison on Earth. Cool. That so sounds I appropriately have... World War Two Cthulhu for me. That's, I'm cool with that. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't rolled mine. What should I do to roll it? Can I? Where are we going to right roll now? this? Help us out, Chax. We need to. We need to figure this out. So you're going away. to want to go to Fantasy Grounds and yep. open. Uh, go down there and click uh, slash die space one d and then ten thousand. And if you type that in and hit enter, it will roll a d ten thousand for you. There you go. Oh my! So now we need to look that up on the uh, table. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Small Dark Bot. You're amazing. Okay, so now I need to find... Oh, uh, my God. What did... Right, Elsie. 8,750. Mm-hmm. Right, okay. What is this? Okay, so at some point, all everyone within 50 yards must save or suffer blinding pain until dawn. <laughs> that sounds awesome. Yeah. I have that effect on people, yeah. Just <laughs> Look at you as like having a bender. Just, we're just going to make that happen. <laughs> write that down over here. Oh, no. Pain. Big, scrawly letters. Uh, what else? Uh, George, 7,149. Oh, my days. This is a big list. 149. Huh. I recommend control effing. <laughs> yeah, I am. So your okay. footprints are going to vanish at some point. Ooh. If you need them. <laughs> that sounds good for you. That's, that's all right. That's when Jesus is appropriate. Yeah. You can, you can call on that anytime. 
Susie, I wouldn't recommend you calling on your thing. I'll just no. have to. I'll just have to slide that in there at some point. Oh no! Oh, yeah, <laughs> this is awful. <laughs> um, Sophia, seven thousand eight hundred and fifty-six. What is this? Vines sprout from the ground at your feet and attack you. Brilliant. Oh my no! <laughs> Vines. <laughs> See, you say vine, Sam, but what I hear is replace with tentacles. Tentacles! Gets... <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Uh, where are we here? Uh, Constance, 2,951. That, my friends, is... If you are hit by a bludgeon on a natural 20, Caster is badly sunburned. So if you get slapped in the face, sunburn. Wait, I get sunburn or the the caster? The so presumably you. This is this is a wild magic table. Cool. So presu yeah, you, presumably it's you. If you get credit on, you get a sunburn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, cool. All right. So. Without further ado, I mean, I love ado, but let's let's crack on with it. We'll go into the first part of our Acton Cthulhu adventure called A Trip to Kent. Year is August 1939. Europe is on the cusp of war. German expansion threatens to engulf Poland after Austria and Czechoslovakia are brought into the fold of the Third Reich in the years and months prior. Britain and her allies, while remaining cautious, do little diplomatically to hold back Nazi domination. Meanwhile, Germany and Italy form the beginning of the Axis in a pact of steel. In Spain, nationalist dictator General Franco holds power over a broken Spain, torn up by a civil war that's lasted three years, with both the Nazis and Soviets using this proxy war to test their newest weapons of destruction. A week or so ago, you each received a letter. On the back, the return address indicates it comes from a Clemens Park in Kent, England. For Elsie Braithwaite, stationed at the Women's Auxiliary Air Force, it's for a significant detail, as she'd been there once before during an Army, Navy and Air Force mixer uh, just a month before. Opening it, she reads the same message that was sent to everybody. Susie, would you mind reading that handout for me? Has that all popped up for everybody? Yeah, I can see that. Sweet. All right. <clears throat> Dear Elsie, I'm writing to you to ask for your help. I've re received a letter from Austria by an acquaintance of mine, Gisela Waltron. Is it Waltron or Waltram? Who knows for now? Ooh. I'm sorry to say her husband has recently passed away and she suspects foul play. She's asked me to investigate, but I fear there may be bigger forces at work, given her husband's scholarly interests. I hope it's glad to find you well, and do hope that you you finally enjoyed yourself at the forces down at, oh my god, dinner dance. I asked around for an excellent pilot, and your superiors, by sheer coincidence, mentioned you. I knew immediately you'd be the right woman for the job, given your can-do attitude and good old-fashioned common sense. Your sincerely, Alec Ward Gray. So reasons are given for everybody's attendance. Uh, Captain Ward, the Viscount, needs someone overseas to see his little operation. Uh, Constance and Sophia. Uh, it mentions that the Sphinx Reading Club might be involved somehow. Uh, and George, uh, he needs a man in Europe who knows what's going on. Um, so, uh, Elsie, the WAF gives you a license to fly an AS-6 Envoy down to Biggin Hill RAF base, which is just in Kent, uh, while the two girls from London take the train down. Uh, Captain, you fly to Gatwick Airport, where a car is waiting for you, while your journey, George, is taken care of at every stage, from cars to ferries, as you make your way across the channel. As you individually arrive at Clemens Park, just south of Biggin Hill, 
A huge wall of trees gives way to an eight foot high, rough red brick perimeter wall and black raw iron gates that open for you as your car approaches the grounds. Viscount Towton has cared for your journey, uh, if just here, as a local Kent driver pulls up into a large circular driveway. So the site before you is of a quintessential English country estate. Through the passenger window of the Ford Model B, you can see a red brick Jacobean mansion. It's front gabled in that kind of uh, curved Dutch style with white flagstones around the rim. Uh, and its many white frame windows invite you to look inside. Surrounding you and surrounding the house lies this beautiful garden full of pinks and purples and blues and greens of a well-kept flower beds and lots of hedgerows. In the distance, there's some groundkeepers tending to ancient yew trees uh, and, the level, uh, and they level the tops of hedges with pairs of long shears. Just climbing out of the back seats, out of the front passenger door, the first sight that greets you below the domineering house is a figure of a middle-aged woman with shoulder-length bright ginger hair styled in large, neat curls. Her plump cheeks soften a stern look, and her cream chiffon blouse and calf-length grey skirt and polished shoes give her a sense of calm organisation. Welcome to Clements Park she says, without even a hint of a smile. And she leads you up the steps of the house. She leads you through in large, polished, dark oak front doors into a wood panelled hallway. The banister of the hallway is a grand square staircase, and that's carved in the most intricate natural designs of leaves and berries, and then uh, varnished over, while the oak wall panelling on the walls uh, carries much of the same and then occasionally gives away to an unfamiliar family crest. Your bags are left in the foyer and as you are led by this woman into, the, into a white drawing room where there's cream sofas and two high back chairs, uh, she allows you to sit and wait. Uh, she leads you inside and as new strange faces start to join the room, there is an awkward silence. Around you, the white walls are adorned with paintings of European cities, and on the mantelpiece of a small fireplace rest several framed pictures of a blonde-haired gentleman in far-flung corners of the world on agricultural digs. The glass cabinet behind the high-backed chairs contains a strange mix of high-class uh, porcelain and ancient artefacts, bones and like pot fragments, even some gold medallions and coins and such. Uh, Constance and Sophia, seeing as you guys know each other, you came down on the train from London uh, together, what, where are you and what are you doing in the silence that surrounds this room and the group? Uh, I'm, I'm probably chosen to sit on one of the high backed chairs um, and I'm, I'm probably whichever one is closest to that display cabinet and I'm probably kind of awkwardly sitting there admiring the things in it and trying to figure out what each of them are and seeing if I can place them and then I probably nudge Sophia uh, as soon as I see something that looks really interesting so like one of the gold medallions that looks really intricate and kind of nudge her and point over to it not wanting to draw too much attention like with everybody else sure um Pruitt, as a American man in England, in this mm -hmm. strange Jacobean country ha home that just, you know, the the kind of thing doesn't quite exist over in the states. Uh, mm. How are you taking this in, and and how are you taking in the group? Uh, well, you know, like my mom said, there's a stranger's only someone you hadn't introduced yourself to yet. So as soon as he walks in, he's gonna, you know, take a lay of the land. And uh, you go up to each and every person and introduce himself as Captain W.C. Ward, 29th Regiment, USA. Uh, how y'all doing? There's an awkward British silence. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sounds good for a Brit. Uh, no, I feel like at this point I'll see you. Uh, I hope. Uh, Elsie Braithwaite. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Oh. And she offers a hand. It's a bit... 
not dirty, but you can tell like like her nails are all chipped and short, and she's got like engine like grease all up in the creases of her nails, and they you know, well used hands. She offers you a handshake. Uh, yeah, and and even though he uh, even though this guy's, you know, he's in dress uniform, it's clean press, his nails are clipped and everything, he does not hesitate to shake your hand uh, and doesn't even look at it twice, uh, uh, oddly, and gives you a firm handshake back. Elsie, are you wearing a WAF uniform at the moment, or are you in civilian clothing, or is something else? Um, I think actually uh, she would probably be in her uniform. So she's neatly dressed, but um, you know you can't get rid of that that hard working hands kind of look, no matter yeah. how much you scrub. So uh, yeah, so she's obviously a, a member of armed forces as well. Sure. Anyway, uh, so so uh, uh, I think George is uh, strolling around the room. Uh, maybe there's a cup of fruit or something like that. So he's gonna he's gonna pick an apple, start just helping himself and eating it. There is a bowl of fruit gonna, on the table, and he's gonna start whistling. And in that look. moment, in through the archway behind you, strides a short English gentleman in a simple linen summer jacket and trousers with an open-necked white shirt and deep red neckerchief. Hello, chums, he says cheerfully as he steps in front of your assembly. His face is handsome, with a thin, long nose and his head topped with thick, curly, blonde hair. Well, thanks for coming. It's awfully good you could make it. We've got some very well-traveled individuals amongst us, and uh, those who haven't come too far at all. Tell me, have you managed to get acquainted yet? He asks as he grabs a glass bottle from an ice bucket and he pours himself a tonic water. Well, sir, I've introduced myself, uh, for sure. How are you doing, sir? Buddy, how are you doing? Uh, I'm doing all right. How about yourself? Excellent, excellent. Good. I hope the flight was okay. Oh, you know, it bucked a little bit, but uh, none, I've, I've, I've been through worse. It always does. It's Imperial Airways. They didn't take you up via Canada, did they? No, not this time, thankfully. I don't like the cold too much. Good. It seems like... Can, we, uh, the right can, we, drop the, can we drop the nice teas and proceed with the mission? Uh, I'm not here to uh, familiarize myself with uh, sold other Yankee soldiers and uh, aristocrats. You called uh, me because you wanted to. He he you. speaks in he speaks in French to you, uh, Georges. I understand, but this is a team, and we need to meet the team. Well, sure. Uh, just to describe myself, I've got a big cheval moustache. Uh, I look kind of. I'm not especially good looking. Uh, I could be a worker or someone you just pass by and wouldn't notice in the street. But right now I'm wearing a black jacket uh, with zippers and pockets uh, on each breast. Uh, I'm wearing um, regular civilian trousers over that, but the jacket's got a somewhat military look to them, but you, you don't cannot quite tell which military. But I do wear a, a military side cap. Uh, which got a, a little tassel hanging at the front, which is not something you've seen in the, the RAF or the American forces. And there's an emblem uh, on top of that tassel, which is purple, yellow, and red. So I got my side cap there. Okay, right, well, I, I guess I can introduce myself. Uh, Georges de Conac, uh, Republican Spanish Army. So, um, uh, I guess I will be the one uh, showing you the way uh, across the channel. Might be tricky sometime. You all got the uh, kind of gist of the letter, I presume. Yeah, well. So, uh, an old uh, acquaintance of mine, uh, uh, Gisela, uh, she uh, she got in touch. I'm afraid her her fiance has been offed. Uh, she suspects some foul play. Now, um, 
I shouldn't really be saying this, but I uh, had a little chat with the intelligence services, and uh, there might be something in this. Um, might be something also in our interests too. And he looks squarely at the Price Sisters at that second. Uh, now I wonder if there's something a little bit bigger going on than uh, just just some uh, inter uh, German politics. Uh, see, her fiance was a was a bit of a scholar, so uh, I wonder if their interest in the uh, Cult, uh, cultish, occultish stuff would uh, would be part of this, maybe. So uh, I wonder if uh, you would all assist me in uh, heading over to Vienna and uh, investigating the matter for me. Vienna. I got special dispensation from your commander, so don't you worry about that. Oh, I always like the sausages from there. Well, uh, so, just by the way, uh, there was a donation for Wild Magic Surges for me and the captain. Oh man, we roll those. <laughs> Is this happening now? It's happening yeah, now. That's, that's what happens when you shake hands in Cthulhu. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think we've got some illusion regarding uh, oh, Vienna. Is, uh, might be uh, pleasant in this season this year. Um, still. I'm still not making out what this uh, antiquaries stuff uh, has got to do with uh, with uh, the fight against fascism. I I'll turn to to Georges and say in, in in French, look, Towton's a good bloke. If he's asked you, it's for a reason. Well, I'm just asking for the reason. I don't have time to spare. And uh, when I look at this place and. Uh, Food being used as a ornament, uh, I think people around here uh, have got luxuries. Uh, the people I fight along uh, don't have. George, my friend, I understand completely, and you know, I'm you know me. I'm doing my best. I'm trying to help and picking up, I suppose, where the government is dropping the ball. I mean. I don't have much to go on, I'm afraid, chaps. I really don't. Um, but things are afoot and uh, a little bit otherworldly. Now, I know you're, you're, you're worried about this antique stuff. And, you know, I've always been interested in the slightly strange uh, old find and whatnot. But there really is something going on here. I have word of it. And uh, we should take a little look. Now... Again, really shouldn't be saying, but if the little team is successful, if we're able to prove to the them in Whitehall, um, we may be on to something. We may be on to actually developing this as a bit more of an enterprise. I scoff at the word enterprise. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. I know, old chap. Okay, look, Alec, uh, I trust your instinct. Uh, you've been, uh, you had good hunch in the past, and uh, you've been uh, helping the guys back home. So I will go along with this. Uh, what do you want from me? Just get those two, those four uh, in Vienna, that's it? Well, uh, I just uh, need someone on the ground who really knows that kind of that kind of field work. Uh, as much as the captain here has maybe seen a bit of action, uh, I don't think that you, as my contacts, have really been able to get out in the field as much as you have, George. And you know, I need someone who knows what that means, if you know what I mean. I turn towards Ward and, and say in a very approximate English. Uh, so what, you've seen some action. Uh, I've got a few days alongside MacPaps, uh, good folks, uh, fought well. Uh, what theater have you been uh, fighting on? Well, I, I, I've been trained, sir, by the finest uh, fighting force that uh, God ever blessed on this planet. So uh, whatever pops up, I'm sure I'll be able to handle it. I throw a dubious look to Alec. <laughs> you don't know him, George. You wait. And 
exactly what is our part in this? We're a couple of antiquities academics. We seem martial, martial people. What's the nature of it? It's true, but you're the two best minds I know and trust when it comes to this kind of thing. Uh, while the others may provide a bit of action and Elsie might provide the transport, it's you girls that will really figure this out for me, I think. You, you said uh, this man was interested in the occult. Do you have any more information on what he was actually looking at? It means I might be able to begin uh, recording some information and looking into things while everything is arranged, but what exactly was he dabbling with? So, um, our man, the uh, uh, Dr. Ehrlichman, uh, so he was a member of the Sphinx Reading Club. Now, I know they meet down in your bookshop down on Museum Street, so I wondered if their branch in Vienna, their, their main kind of flagship place, uh, I wondered whether they had more information. I had a little ask around. Turns out he was digging through a bit of, a bit of the old stuff about the uh, some artifacts that had been dug up from Egypt a while back by the old. I think it's the DOG, the German, uh, like archaeological division, um, all tied up in the archives in Berlin now, of course. But uh, he must have been digging around something they didn't like because. Well, Zella thinks they've offed him, so... Interesting. But there's not much reading that I get at the moment. Wait, so they dug something out of the ground and they killed him for it? Well, no, I don't think it's all that. I think it's he's been looking at something that's been dug up in the past. They've got it. He's had a little... He's kind of, you know, dug into it a bit more, metaphorically speaking. And now, well, they didn't like what he was finding, maybe. I don't know. Any idea what he found? I really don't. I'm hoping that Gisela has a bit more information. If if we, uh, and I look over um, at Sophia, uh, if we can have access to any of the research he might have been doing, we might be able to sift through it and make some sense of what it is he might have been looking at. Oh, God, yes. Yes, of course. Anything you come across. Have a good sniff around, but uh, unfortunately I don't have anything to give you. What I can give you is a way into Vienna. Uh, well, this young lass here. What have you got uh, from I... the town? Well, I'm, your plane is, uh, we're going to chart all the way there, fly direct. Uh, you know, we're, st we're, still, we're still welcome in what is now Germany. Um, and I've uh, I've managed to get that figured out so that yeah we can fly you straight there. Um, also uh, for you, George, we've managed to uh, get some papers uh, just to make sure that your part in this is all taken care of and covered up. Uh, also, we've actually got some papers for you as well, just so that the whole RAF connection doesn't come back to bite you. Yeah, it's probably for best, I. Any of you speak uh, German? Oh, I do. I speak a little bit German. Oh, good, good. Gonna be handy. Mm. Couple couples are less suspicious. Yeah, you just see. Well, you just see if we kind of get uncomfortable a little bit. <laughs> we'll have to work out a little routine. Don't worry, nothing to uh, intimate. Hopefully, a bit of field crop. I love it. Love it. Please, uh, we're welcome to stay here uh, for the, the, the remainder. The, all your bags will be upstairs. Uh, please do get, just get to know each other uh, before we're off. Uh, and I'll charter that flight in a couple of days. Uh, but yes, please, my house is your house, as I believe they say in uh, somewhere, needed, Mexico, uh... somewhere. Does, 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 does the house extend to uh, the garage? Perhaps, maybe, a little bit. You know, because you've got all those fine, fine motors packed away in your garage, uh, Alec. And, well, you know what happens to a motor if it doesn't run. And, I, you know, it's you get your best mechanic to look over them. Are you volunteering to be my best mechanic now? I mean, I fixed your other one, didn't I? 
Well, yes, yes. That was something too. She's uh, mm. worked brilliantly since as well. I'll have a chat with Maggie. I'll make sure that that's all uh, that's all ac accessible for you. Nice. No problem. Uh, so we'll we'll I, keep the plane up a bit still as well. Might to understand that uh, this will be a, a something more of a, a bit of subterfuge than, shall we say, for this. I mean, yes, we are going under as civilians. Well, you are going under as civilians. Um, I mean, there's no kind of military authority or presence here. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Mm -hmm. They don't teach right. you that in West Point, huh, do they? Oh, they, uh, there's a yes, there's a couple of classes on it. I did pretty well. Yeah, right. Well, we have two days to uh, test that. Yeah. I'm going to have to make some arrangements. The museum's probably going to wonder why I'm going overseas for a couple of weeks. Yes, if you could have a chat and just make sure everything's all right. Uh, use the phone. Um, uh, just ask Maggie. It's just through the lobby outside. Constance, I presume this won't be a problem for you. Not for me, no. Just getting a bit of time off. Lovely. I think I'm definitely owed some. I worked two weeks straight a few weeks ago, got so interested in a new collection of books we had come and didn't even realise. <laughs> nice. Lovely. All right then, chaps. Well, make yourselves at home, and then we're off to Vienna. Mm. Affirmative. Uh, you guys at this point are fairly free to explore the house, do any little prep work you need to do before uh, we are kind of heading out. Okay, yeah. Uh, Ward will go and stow all of his gear and just kind of start meandering about the house. I'm strapped to my room, out of my uniform, into some overalls, cigarette behind the ear, and I'm down to the garage. Uh, well, I'm going to make some calls. Secret meetings at the bookstore. Hmm? Interesting. I mean, they're not particularly secret meetings. They're a reading group. They meet once every fortnight. There's a lot of material they have to discuss. I don't often find myself in there with them being at work, but... Well, I'll try to make it brief, but this I might need a lot of time. With the phone, the arrangements, it's been busy moving stuff back and forth from the museum. I'll see you. Oh, I'll see you. Uh, and I'm going to go and seek out what I imagine is a fairly extensive library within this house. There is a fairly extensive library, yeah. Um, I want to see if I can dig up. I don't know if he keeps newspapers or anything like that. Uh, anything about that archaeological dig that he mentioned? Um, or see if I can sit down and go through the kind of notes in, in that diary I have to see if I've noted down hearing about it. Um, Sure. If I can think anything up there. Mm -hmm. um, do you, there's no, uh, there's mention of his death and it's very recent. Um, it's probably that you picked up a telegram or something um, just before, just after the kind of last meeting because um, things have happened fairly quickly. Um, as it comes to the library, there is a large library underneath the ground floor. Um, it, you know, predominantly occupies itself with histories, um, also particularly ancient history. Um, but the walls are lined with, you know, anything but occult, esoteric um, bookwork. Interesting I'm, enough. I'm mostly looking to see if there's anything I can find about that particular dig site or that area that the dig site was in. Sure, okay. Um, all right. Roll for me. First roll of the game. Ooh. So uh, this is going to be 2d20 to start off with, because that's always what we roll uh, by default. Um, this, oh my, thinking back to Acton Cthulhu uh, attributes and skills. Right, I, have, I have a history focus in academia, if I can use that. Yep, definitely. Uh, with reason? Yep. Cool. Um, right. So that adds up to 14. So, yeah, so, yeah, so for the folks at home, you made a, 
target number out of the two numbers you had, the attribute and the skill, and then uh, we're looking for each dice to roll equal or lower than those that target number. So each rolled an 11. So you got yeah. how many? Two successes. Two successes. Nice. Okay. So, um, so it was a fairly standard uh, test, not too difficult. So we'll just make that difficulty one, um, which I was thinking of uh, anyway. Uh, and then what well, means that you got one more success than you needed. So that guys generates one momentum, which now you can spend if you want to on this skill test, or we can save for later, and other people can use in the kind of intervening scenes before we leave for Vienna. Cool. Um, in terms of the actual basic success of what you're looking for, you're specifically looking for mention of anything he was working on um, for, and, and what the actual find was uh, yeah the find or like what the dig site was if anything had been dug up there previously just yeah. let me try and find that there's a bit of the thing before here so what he was working on seems to have been um, what is kind of colloquially described um, as the um, black stone. Um, and having a little look through the library, you see that this black stone is essentially a little bit of a kind of Rosetta stone um, that was found in um, Sa'el Hagar in Egypt. Um, other than that, uh, there's not much information on it. It contained uh, a, a text of a couple of languages, um, which meant that, much like the Rosetta Stone, it could be translated, um, and therefore some of the lesser known languages or dead languages, because of the translation from um, hieroglyphics, actually, could be uh, figured out. And translated a bit. Does it say which languages feature on it? Other you would than have to spend your momentum to obtain information for that. Can I do that, please? You can. All right. So spend that point of momentum. So we haven't got any to bank. That's all cool. Uh, so Black Steel. Uh, it was written in uh, hieroglyphics, hieratic, which is uh, the kind of written language of the ordinary Egyptians. Uh, which turned into a, the, the more modern language. And then it was also written in a strange rune-like script. It was very similar to Fathark, which is the Germanic runic alphabet. Uh, as you are um, looking for those books, one of the books that you try and pull from gets caught on the bookshelf stops and then the whole bookshelf starts moving back and just pushes open as if a jar on hinges so it's not as if something is moving it just that something has been unlocked and that the, like when you just leave a door and it just kind of opens on its own it just swings open just slightly and just just through a gap you can see very dark but you can see the flex of more of the gold lettering on the spines of books. I'm going to disappear into there. Okay. See what's, see what's in there. Just as you're about to move through the doorway, you hear a voice from behind you. Now, if that was anybody else, they'd have been in a lot of trouble. Well, I, I suppose... You and I both know that you can hack it. Well, you shouldn't leave bookcases with lovely little book hinges in when I'm around. You know what my curiosity is like. It's how I ended up working where I am in the first place. What are you well, that's all well and there? good, but I wouldn't be expecting you to try and be reading about a treatise of ballet now, would I? Go on, what are you keeping in there? What are you really keeping in there? I mean, I'd rather not. And he, as he, he leans over past you, just pulls the bookshelf closed another time perhaps 
can I can I be really cheeky as he's shutting it can I see if I can make out any of the words on any of the spines of the books like if there's a word that jumps out that I'd recognize um you should give me if you give me a point of threat you can yeah go on then okay cool so I start with two threat for everyone here uh, so we're up to 10. So now we're up to 11. Now I'll keep reminding you because this should also be public information for you guys. So by adding that, you just get to have a little look and the glint of the light as the book shut, as the, the uh, doors close um, does give you the name Cthulhu. I, I'm not going to say anything else. I'm just going to smile very politely. You're like, I guess I will browse the rest of the collection then. Maybe then, yes. I'll just, I'll go back to whichever book I was reading in before that. Cool. What is everyone else doing? Uh, the the good the good captain would uh, like I said he'd be strolling about but uh, eventually kind of meandering his way around to try to meet all these these other folks that are going to be on this this very clandestine team um, maybe uh, wander over to the garage uh, start with uh, someone he's already kind of at least broken the ice with uh, with Elsie. I, th I feel like as he approaches the garage, you'd find uh, Elsie like elbow deep in an engine, like the hood up. You won't be able to see her. And uh, the first thing you do should be, um, can you pass us that spanner? Just in the box down there. Uh, and he kind of looks over and, which one's a spanner? I'm not, I'm not one for uh, machines. I like, I'm, I'm more for horses. <laughs> Just kind of look at, you do have spanners in America, right? The, She'll walk over and just grab one. This one for future reference. Just this All one. right. He mark, makes a note. Yeah. Wait, horses? Horses? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I grew up on a ranch. Oh. Didn't have too many. Uh, Farm one many, then? Uh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, I've, uh, I've, I've actually, uh, my family's uh, sold uh, old Lord uh, Lord Town here uh, a few, uh, few American uh, Mustangs. It's a different breed of horse. It'll run forever if you, uh, if you treat them right. Yeah, don't no, do much horses. No, I'm not really uh, one for horses. Really, you don't you don't see them that much where I'm from, to be honest. I mean, you're used to pulling uh, mm. wagons down the road, but uh, not so much anymore. No. Yeah, got to uh, make room for them cars, huh? Yeah, yeah. They're uh, cars. They're going somewhere. Just you wait. She like well, turns back to the engine. The wheel. <laughs> yep. Uh, which, speaking of, I'm so excited to get started on this journey. Pro, as she yeah. does that, the like the grinding of the spanner and the manipulation of the engine just starts to fixate in your mind, and it's just it's captivating. It's not. It's not Elsie in the action, but it's the actual rotating of the metal, the mm -hmm. you know, the, the the rubbing of the two surfaces together that just captivate you, um, just for a moment. Oh yeah, and actually, keep, go keep going. Tunnel vision starts to kind of take over a bit, and actually, there is darkness creeping in around the sides of your vision. Um, almost to the point where Elsie, you actually, you can start to notice now as he's leaning further in, his eyes are starting to roll in the back of his head. He's, you know, um, just starting to almost faint into this car engine. Uh, Elsie will grab him and pull him back and be like, hey! No. And she you snaps at? you back. Um, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Um, should go inside and maybe get a little, just splash a little water on my face. Yeah, <laughs> like, I don't know, go off a drink or something like that. Mm, you're right. Yeah, you yeah, want a bit yeah. uh, 
squiffy there in your face. Your eyes aren't all funny and weird. You all right? Yeah, the, yeah. It's probably just this British air. And, um, I'll be right back. All right. And she's kind of like wiping her hands off and watches him go. Like, mm. he'll head inside. <laughs> Splash of water on his face. Just kind of, the hell was that? And then she'll turn, sure, no. put a cigarette. Oh, just go, Americans. And then have a little <laughs> cigarette break. <laughs> Shauna, what are you up to? Um, I think Sophia's probably just, first thing first, check in with the uh, home office as far as, like, she's going to be having to take a leave and kind of fill, fill them in on exactly what she's doing. Sure. Uh, you, um, let's see this here. Uh, you actually hold the line for what is a kind of strangely long amount of time. And then on the other end, you get a secretary who says to you, please hold for Major Grand. And then you are put through to the head of British intelligence at Whitehall Major Grand. Uh, he says, uh, Miss Price, is it? Yes. Yes. Uh, so Alex, uh, Alex informed me that he wants to take you on this little escapade. So uh, don't worry, I've cleared it with, uh, with the Foreign Office. We're all sorted on that front. And... Uh, We've uh, we've had a little chat with the, the museum too, so well they won't miss you for the next couple of weeks if necessary. So it's been taken care of already. Yes, yes, everything. And it seems on the up and up. There's some. Well, we'll see. I mean, if Alex writes, then who knows what for, what kind of forces we face? I mean, I hope he's not. I hope it's all gobbledygook, but. You never know with Alec. This, it's like how much danger am I? Are we in? Cause my sister is here too. Sister. Yes. Constance. What's they call bookstore. Oh right. Okay. Well, I'm sure he's got an idea of what he's doing. Maybe some of an idea. Anyway. Um, do you have any information on the? Uh, Sir and Mr. DeConnick, George DeConnick. Uh, I mean, possibly. I can have a look. Yeah. We'll Something. get that. We'll get that information out to you. Mary, 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 take a note. Take a note. DeConnick. Seems to be a bit of mercenary. Knows. Seems fluent in German. Maybe intelligence of some sort. All right. Okay. Nationality. Um, didn't say, um, somewhere it's European, um, French, maybe some German. Yeah, we'll have a look. Strange one. Yeah, don't worry. We'll get Wild to look into it. Um, um, we'll, uh, we'll keep you, uh, we'll keep you updated with any of that kind of thing. Oh, don't worry, I don't think Alex putting you in any particular danger. It's just a bit of um, a kind of intelligence gathering operation as far as I can surmise. Um, can you send me some research information from the, uh, the museum? Have that sent over here before we leave. About the area, about the, uh, the digs and the various things that are down there. Sure, I'll get, it. I'll get something down to you. Just uh, look in. So what, what, what in particular are you looking for? Um, just, um, info about the late, about the, um, location, background information on the, uh, the missing, anything, anything about the digs and artifacts he, they were interested in. Will do. All right. Well, good luck. Just, uh. Try not to get caught up in some of Alex's more stranger <laughs> ideas. And how often would you like me to communicate back with Home Office? 
Uh, well, no, don't worry about that until you're back, really. Uh, wouldn't want to compromise any kind of communication channels, particularly in Austria at the moment. So, uh, yeah, just uh, report back, depending on what's going on. Uh, if you find yourself out in the field too long, then, you know, do do send a telegram or something to the usual channels. All right, will do. Thank you very much. No problem. Good luck. It's... Um, with that, he hangs up. Okay. <laughs> Can hear someone whistling in a nearby corridor. Quite far. Uh, and a pies bar at the door. Oh, Sophia, that's right? Yes, I was sir. looking for you. You told me you, you spoke a little bit of German. Oh, yes, a little bit of German from, um, you know, Gothic architecture and stuff like that. You have to become a little fluent at school and whatnot. Well, that might be uh, quite useful very soon. Sam, can I try to roll to work out... Um, what is Sophia's uh, what, assignation? You know that the fact that she might uh, belong to a certain organization, using one of my uh, cold reading skills. Well, okay. cold reading is different. Cold reading is different. Is what I'm going to use next. I don't know if you, if I okay. could work that out. Uh, okay. This this is this has turned social <laughs> PvP very quickly. Uh, so what I would like you guys to do for me is roll an opposed test. So that means that okay. you guys will be rolling against each other. Now, before we start throwing those dice around, we should mm -hmm. figure out how much you want to spend to improve your odds. So you can buy up to three more d20s if you want to. The first one does cost one uh, momentum or threat. The um, second one, co sorry, the second one you buy costs two more, and then the third dice you buy costs three more. So uh, you don't have any momentum in the bank, and it's a bit of an odd one when it comes to uh, two people. But, um, Shauna, seeing as you're on the defensive here, do you want to give me any threat, because you haven't got any momentum, to buy any extra D20s? Um, no. So I think um, from that call, she's a little bit less on guard with, um, with him at this point. Okay, that's cool. Um... You, you guys also uh, start with three fortune. Um, fortune works a little bit differently. It affects the dice and you, lets you re-roll and stuff. So what you can actually do as well, Sean, if you're thinking about it, is instead of rolling both your d20s, uh, we're going to set one of those d20s to a natural one, which gives you two successes straight off the bat, and then you're just going to mm -hmm. roll the other one. Um, and as you've got three fortune, um, Maybe you might want to do that early if you want, but I'm just giving you the option just in case it's all covered. Okay, I think I'm just going to go um, just with the raw d two d twenty. I think. Cool. All right, uh, Kalum, do you want to roll? Well, do you want to add any more dice? Do you want to set a natural one uh, with fortune, uh, or do you just want to roll two d twenty as well? I will just roll. It's just a. All or right. Maybe I'm what? maybe I'm putting too much on this, but like it's a nice <laughs> little introduction to to some of the mechanics too. So, all right, you guys, you roll, and we'll see what happens. Okay. So, what is the? Uh, so, oh yeah, we need to set what abilities you're going to use. So, um, you've got the attributes and you've got skills. Uh, so, mm -hmm. have a little quick look. Let me know what you would like to use. Um, so in terms of attributes, just to remind myself and people at home, we've got agility, brawn, coordination, insight, reason, and will. So I would say maybe um, insight would be what you're using, Callum, and then will would probably what you'd be using, Shauna, because it's about your sense of self-discipline. Okay. And then you would add... Uh, a skill rating to that based on the skills you've got. Um, so, Callum, I'm going to say this is observation, and then, Shauna, this is persuasion for you. So I want you to okay. add your will and your persuasion. Okay. And, Callum, I want you to add your observation and your insight together. Those are your target <laughs> numbers. We want My each to to roll that. equal or under. Equal or it's under, a nine. yeah. Mm -hmm. Under a nine. 
So yeah. Oh boy. Oh. So you got two successes. Oh wow. Callum, what did you get from your eighteen and your twelve? <laughs> Nothing. I got a ten, uh, the two together, uh, but uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> As a little house rule, I'm just going to say because this is the two of you to get like versus each other. I'm not going to award any momentum to the group. Um, I am going to give Shauna a bonus question uh, to you, Callum, and you have to answer it truthfully. Shauna, this is completely up to you. He's kind of clocked you. You can tell from a little bit of your like intelligence tr kind of training or what you've heard is that this is definitely like a read. This is someone who's like, I want to know what this person's about. But is there, from the way you deflected this, is there anything that you want to know about George? Um... How did you de learn German? George, From there? How did how did you learn German? This is a truthful answer. You can be as vague as you like, but it, this has to be the truth. Fighting alongside some of them. And when I say that, you can tell that uh, I seem to have very. Uh, Emotional memories of that. Uh, mm -hmm. When I say German, uh, I look uh, through the window and I seem to be, yeah, to be sort of sad and, and missing those individuals, those German individuals I fought uh, alongside with. Mm. In that moment, the Lynn suited figure uh, of Alec steps into the hallway and just pretty nonchalantly just says, Gang along, chaps. Oh, he's very well. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Good stuff. Our uh, German skills going to be uh, definitely very useful. Uh, actually, uh, maybe, um, Sophia, you would like to give me a hand. Uh, I wanted to double check the covered clothes uh, Alec had prepped for us. I'd like to make sure they, what do you say in English, uh, fit the bill. All right, yeah, I'll run through. I'm definitely um, better at reading than I am speaking in, and I definitely still, ha I don't know if I can pass necessarily for being German, but I guess well, you'll be the, be the best uh, judge of that. Well, you know, picture a book. Where um, that you wouldn't want people to pick up knowing what is inside, but you like to hide it, so you would change the cover, obviously. But uh, it's not that simple. I think someone uh, as lectured as you uh, could pick up something odd between a, a cover and a, a book which doesn't match uh, in size and quality of paper and these sort of things. Mm -hmm. Well, to uh, make a, a good deceptive piece you need to uh, work things out together so look at those clothes like that yes solid advice chap it's exactly why i brought you on this little escapade so where are those cover clothes you found us i hope they are from Ger a german manufacturer otherwise uh, I have tried my best, my man. I've tried my best. Uh, I managed Look. to get some some stuff out of Berlin, but fortunately, I think it's a bit last season. If you get my drift, well, no tweed like last time. No, no, no. I've learned since then, chap. Learned since then. Anyway, Mag, you'll deliver those up to your rooms, but uh, I'll, I'll see you at dinner, I guess. Oh yes. Cat fight. Um, <laughs> rando cat fight in my house. Um, cool, okay. So you guys um, head on down for dinner in the evening uh, into um, what is a rather large dining room. Not, ex not quite great hall, but a rather large dining room. Beautiful sets uh, of cutlery and placemats everywhere. Um, and um, the staff who, uh, you know, aren't quite Downton Abbey, but the, all the staff have been fairly 
what for the time is modern uh, dress, um, but still fairly smart. Shirts, jackets, uh, ties. Um, Maggie, the um, kind of uh, head of the household, uh, head of the kind of housekeeper, uh, she's dining with you as well, actually. Um, and uh, you guys uh, are sat down to a beautiful starter um, of, I don't know, local trout or something. I'm coming up with this. Uh, anyway, uh, and uh, as Alec raises a toast to this escapade, all the glasses raised at the table. Ward, yours explodes. Glass shatters across the table. Slowly but surely, as people are panicking a bit, holding glasses, they smash too. People set their glasses down on the, on the table. They smash as well. Soon decanters and wine bottles start rolling onto the floor, smashing onto the ground. What are you guys doing? <clears throat> uh, Ward is immediately looking at the windows, thinking that this is some kind of like gunfire, mm -hmm. like seeing if we're being assaulted from like the windows or something, but moving to cover. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. So getting into cover, kind of underneath a, a windowsill, kind of thing. Yeah, Elsie uh, um, will be basically doing the same, making sure civilians like down and and in cover. Mm -hmm. Do Do I get any weird senses as this is happening? As you look down at your feet, the glass seems to move towards you and seems to push itself in towards your shoes and then kind of grows like ice crystals uh, along the floor, holding you in place and happening as well to everybody else. These kind of strange glass crystals start holding you in place, uh, even as your positions in cover guys as well underneath the windowsill and as you're getting civilians down too. Um, everyone's fairly low on the ground, but the, these strange crystals are now, uh, have now basically grappled people in place. Is the same thing happening to Alec? Yeah. Okay. I will grab a chandelier on the table and start smashing the, the crystals at my feet and the one of the closest person to me. Cool, okay. Um, I want you to roll for me, uh, see how much you can break away. Uh, this is going to be brawn and fighting, I guess. Uh, unless okay. there's any, like, any, unless you want to try and substitute athletics for it, I'm open to that too. Um, but yeah, do you want to roll brawn? It's going to be brawn and fighting. Cool, all right. This is going to be difficulty uh, one as well. So it, it removes one from my total then. So I've got seven plus one. That's eight minus one seven. No, no. So one? you'll get the you'll get your target number from the attribute and the skill, mm -hmm. uh, and then roll your two d twenties, and then you're looking for one success at least. Oh, okay. Uh, it's not my evening. Uh, I had eight, uh, and I failed to roll under that. All right, so you're smashing at these glass crystallized kind of ice. Uh, it's slowly starting to chip away, um, but more is starting to form. And even on the, the kind of chandelier thing that you've got, um, it's, it's starting to kind of take over a bit. I, I have a question. Um, yeah. So as a spellcaster, I get something called counterspell. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's supposed to be when an enemy that I can see attempts to cast a spell, but can I try using it to kind of chant a ward to see if I can get this to stop? Yeah, well, absolutely. Still... Yeah. Uh, Alec is <laughs> looking over to you fairly kind of aghast, but he's looking at you. Um, either that or I can try using my actual spell, but that does mental stress, so I don't know if I could use that to shatter it. I don't know which would be which you feel would be more appropriate because I'm happy to actually use my spell and take the try the try against the cost for that. Sure. C crystals don't have much brains, so I'm not, yeah. <laughs> not going with that. I'll, 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 try, I'll try the counter spell then just to see if I can get it to stop. Yeah, um, cool. Absolutely. So spell casting, <laughs> let's to go. What, uh, what is that for you? Um, so like I said, normally this is when there's an enemy I can see casting a spell. So I roll I'll my power this. dice. 
I'll, I'll let I'll let this happen. I'm going to raise the difficulty of the spell by one because you you don't know the source of this. Uh, yeah. What it says is the reacting character rolls their power dice for each effect rolled. The difficulty. Oh, okay. This just increases the difficulty of the spell that somebody else does. Okay. That's all right. So I want you to make uh, a test. Let's have a look and see what what is probably the most. You're a research spellcaster, aren't you? I am, yeah. So it's more focused on academia. I've so, got academia and occultism focus. So I will give you that focus. Now that focus means that your uh, kind of critical success range on the D20 is increased. So what's your academia uh, rating? It is four. So if you roll a four or under on one D on, on a D20, you'll get two successes on that D20. Cool. Can I do that with uh, Will? Yeah, that's absolutely perfect. This is this is you trying to repel something from this room that's got this energy of crystallizing breaking glass. Um, uh, can I can I pay you a point of threat to roll an extra D20 as well? You can, yeah. Did I say this was difficulty two? Because I think that's what we're we're pitching for. Uh, yeah, that's fine. I'll, I'll give you a point of threat then so I can roll 3d20. Cool. All right. Um, so you guys hear me begin to kind of mutter under my breath um, with my eyes quite wide. Uh, you can't quite make out the words, but it, it doesn't sound like a, like a, a normal language. In that Alex. second, your eyes lock with Alex and he watches you. And he also mouths the words that you're mouthing. Cool. Uh, oh. I rolled a 20. <laughs> oh, no. But I, I rolled a 19. Really, I would really like to spend a fortune point, if I can, to re-roll that. Cool. So just, just roll 1d20 for me. Cool. What's uh, the target number you're looking for? I mean, you've got two successes there. Uh, 14. 14. Okay. So two, three, four successes. We've taken away that complication. Yeah. Um, so that means you've got two momentum for the group to help get them free from the ice. Um, so yeah, George, as you notice, as uh, Constance is starting to kind of mutter under her breath that um, it's not that the crystals are now kind of decreasing, um, but they are, they're not growing now and they're, you're starting to be able to chip away more at them. Okay, so to speed this up a little bit, I'm going to ask everyone, we're going to do a kind of a, a group check. Um, so who wants to lead this now that I'm, so I'm going to say, Constance, you can't assist here, but we're going to have one person leading this test, this skill test, and then everyone else will assist by rolling 1d20 each. Uh, I was going to say, Captain War was about to grab a, a like a candelabra or something off the, the an end table next to the, the the window and start just trying to sh shatter this glass, um, trying not to focus too much on what uh, whatever Constance is doing over there. Saw it sure. in a tent revival one time. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So you're going to be leading this task. You're going to be rolling two d20. You can buy some more as well with momentum if you want to. Now everyone else will assist. So what attribute and skill combination do you want to be using? I think that would probably be brawn and fighting. Cool. Uh, so that, that's cool. going to be your so target 14, number. Fourteen yeah. for me there. Any focuses there with fighting? Uh, uh, no, I got. I have, well, I, I mean, I have situational awareness or threat awareness, uh, but uh, you know, that's. I don't know if that really counts. No, I'm not going to count here. Okay. Well then, nope. That's it. Okay, so hold on a second. So uh, everyone else, um, I want you guys uh, to let me know how you are trying to free yourself and others from um, this. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be like brawn, like you don't have to be hitting stuff. Uh, maybe you're using agility somehow. I'm open to suggestions. <laughs> well, I think George is going to reveal... Head. Unless I think George's going to oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I think George's going to reveal that he he had a, uh, a fire weapon concealed under uh, his uh, shirt. <laughs> so yeah, he's yeah. got a a small pistol uh, picture the oh. the Walter from uh, James Bond, but uh, older sure. looking, and he's he's going to 
start shooting at close range, like really point blank, uh, but next to to his his boots uh, to free himself from the uh, from the thing. He doesn't have a lot of shots, but. Uh, I'm gonna try that. He, he seems yeah. really freaked out by what Constance and Alex seems to have done or attempted, and what is going on. He never Dude. seen something like that. Dude, I like yeah. it. I like it. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a fortune point for that. I think that's really cool. Thank um, you. So a little bonus there for you uh, if Bring you want. Bring a pistol to roll. dinner, man. I'm, hopefully the cook's already done that job. Um, <laughs> People are still screaming, even though you've got these little witty one-liners going on. Uh, yeah, let's do this. All right. So I'm guessing, so I, so this, this is going to be uh, coordination and, and fighting. Um, Shauna, what are you going to be doing? Ooh. Oh, it's probably going to, as much as it's terrible, she's going to take out a book, like... um one of her like heavier books and start kind of like whacking at it by her foot. So I'm probably that's going to be <laughs> brawn and fighting as much as that is. Joe, for the love of it and for, for the hilarity, yeah. I, I'm willing to give you brawn and academia. <laughs> <laughs> a, yeah. It's a really heavy subject, you know? So, yeah. Still got it. <laughs> <laughs> We're at the end of a long week of shooting. I'm, I'm in the zone right now. Sure, we're all we're all there. Don't worry. Don't worry. Yeah. Susie, what are you doing here? I mean, unless this crystal's a car, I'm pretty screwed. So I feel like Elsie uh, would get out her lucky spanner and just start trying to pry it away using leverage instead of physical might. She's engineering Boom. her way out. Yeah, man. Um, that's this is what it's all about. Stretching those skills. Yeah, engineering, uh, I'm not going to give you any focuses to apply. But uh, yeah, if you want to use uh, either agility or brawn, because you're, like, you're using the mm -hmm. agility is about your kind of movement and, and some dexterity. So if you're levering it, it's more about the, the physicality of it rather than mm -hmm. being like Hulk, pull things. Yeah. Cool. Um, no, All right. I'll, I'll use so, thanks. The three of you that I've covered just now, I want you to roll 1d20 for me using that target number that you've made of your, your skill and stuff. Uh, guys, this is going to be difficulty four overall because we are looking at the oh whole my, group oh, here. No. Oh, okay, a complication. Oh, I think I might use my fortune point to <laughs> re-roll that. Sure. Okay, I'm going to roll... I need to do a 10 or under. Okay, a oh. 1. Oh, guys. That was... Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Oh, no! So, so where, where are we at? Well, I made one. I made one of my two dice, made a 6. So, Pruitt, I had you... A yeah, yeah. Pruitt, you rolled there, didn't you, with the 5 and the 17? Yep. So, I got one success out of that. All right. How many have you got in total? Elsie got one. We've got one, so we've got three. Now, so first session, we are getting used to this. Like, V and I know this game very well. You guys might not know it so well. So we do have a couple of momentum banked, don't we? Oh, yes. yes. Do have two right. momentum banked. Mm -hmm. So, so as, yeah. a, as, a lead, as a leader of the skill test, Prit, you are absolutely inclined to um, add some dice to your pool. So if you wanted... That. If you wanted another dice, that's one momentum. If you wanted a fourth dice to roll, that would be a momentum and then a threat to me. I'll just, um, let's do one. We need one more success, right? Yeah, cool. All okay. Right. <laughs> so normally... There we hey! go. We got one more success. Go. Hey! Perfect. Okay, so uh, normally you spend momentum before you roll and then fortune after because then you can do the re-rolls and stuff like that. Um, so with this, we have got a success. All of you starting to prize chip just thump with a book, this strange kind of uh, growing glass. Um, mm -hmm. It's stopped growing now, so as you're, you're, you're wrenching your feet away, cracking it apart, and weirdly enough, after you're all freed, the glass melts down into the floor and then just disappears. And there is a scared silence amongst the staff and amongst you and Alec as you all just kind of look at each other. He's looking at Constance, just kind of... 
I'm just going to look him dead in the eyes and just go, that wasn't me. Me neither. And then I'm going to immediately look at Sophia and see what happens. What, what, what was that thing? What happened? What, what, what yeah, you George, two were I don't know. To? Someone explain to me what the hell just occurred. Magic. You see, you see, Captain Talk Lloyd like bl blush a little bit. Magic. You're talking about I've magic. Locked, I've locked eyes with Sophia because I have no idea how she's going to react to what she's just seen me try to do. <laughs> this chaps is what I'm talking about. That's why I think something bigger is going on in Austria. Then the Third Reich. Did you drug us? Something uh, behind in yes. Okay. What is this thing? What What did you put in our food? You've barely touched your trout, George. Look. Mm, I look at my trout and uh, I freeze, <laughs> realizing that. It looks back at you, having not been eaten <laughs> at all. <laughs> Tell us more. Are, are, the, are the others working with that kind of things? I've, I mean, they've, they've been experimenting with stuff, uh, but it was airplanes, cannons, and all this crap. N never heard of such thing. Not all of it, George. Not all of it. I think some of their more cultist inclination or inclined forces were uh, over in Spain with you unfortunately uh, I don't know if you Where? saw anything I, I don't know I don't know I all I get is whisperings you you hear things in the in the circles that we frequent and it's not good really he looks directly at Constance uh, almost for a second, just ignoring everybody else. I do think we need to get some kind of warding up here. I'm not quite sure exactly what to look for, but there needs to be something. Maybe it's maybe they're detecting us. Maybe they know I'm onto something. I don't know. So it's I can't tell whether it's, uh, it's kind of a mine location or whether it's just the actual location of the of the house or what. I'm gonna look him dead in the eyes again and just go, or it could be the books in the library. But either way, I have my ritual kit with me. Yes. I can set up a warding if you wish. I mean, that's... warding. What? Oh. What's it? Warding. What? What's this? They. What's happening. There. I didn't tell you this, Sophia, because I didn't know if you would find it ridiculous or not. But there are there are things beyond this. I've seen some of it, a small fraction of it, but this. We've all just been attacked by something that is far beyond this room. So anyone here who doubts what Alec has just said about magic, I would beg you to recount what you have literally just seen. So all the all the stuff in the the, the books are that real? She just kind of like she looks sh like more shocked by just what happened. She's kind of like not quite let what's happened like sink in and what you said. Some of it. What what stuff? What what did you ever read about this piastri there? I work among the esoteric. I have access to hundreds of texts in the store I work in, but I've also used magical objects. I own a very, very old scrying mirror made of obsidian, and sometimes, not often, very rarely, you see things. And sometimes those things have an effect on you, and that's how I learnt to do things like I just did. But, Sophia, I'm Really sorry, I never told you this, but I thought you'd think I was crazy. Uh, I mean, it's a little crazy. 
I mean, without, I mean, normally, yes, but seeing this, is this why you're here? I guess so. Um, we should, we should talk later before we leave. Yeah. That's fair. Let's all just have a bit of food. Let's talk. And then I completely understand if you just want to walk straight out of here, never speak to us again. But let me tell you, the SS are up to something. And it's, as Constance says, something esoteric, something to do with the occult. Hitler and his goons have taken a strange interest in what us academics have been fairly casually researching for a number of years now. And I believe they wish to turn their power against the world. Now the world means everybody. I'm not walking away from any fight. I will keep Good. on fighting until the last of them uh, is stopped. No pasaran. See, George? Oh, That's why I like you here. Mr. Al here. Um, what, what? Why did you bring me here? For, what, 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 am, what am I supposed to do against this? The, 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 this, I don't know, chat, honestly. That's why we have other members of the team. But you, of, of all of them, can provide a headstrong, calculated attitude to field work. And I know you'll be a reliable pair of hands. I need you to lead this operation. The, the things we are dealing with are, are done by people. That's the key here. People like you and I. People who can be stopped just as easily as you and I. Well, I, I don't, I don't know if I'd ever do. But you can tell he can like hardly bring himself to even say the word magic. Not asking anyone to do anything, anything that's outside of their field of expertise. I'd like to All check right. if Alex said. I mean, it, it's a bit convenient to convince us of what is going on. So I'm trying to read him, like. I trust part of his, what he says, but I'm wondering if he, if it was a setup to to show us that this sort of things happened. Okay, are you looking for just a general read of his mood, or are you looking specifically for, is this a setup? Yes, a setup. Oh, the setup. Okay, this is going to be difficulty too. I want you to roll insight for me, and I want you to roll observation <laughs> as well. So, insight and observation. Add those two together. Roll two d20s. You're looking for two successes. Do you want to buy any more dice? We've got one momentum left, I think. First, is my instinct playing here? My focus? Absolutely. Okay, so uh, just let me have a look. So that will be insight, you said, plus observation. That would be 10. I need two successes, you said? Yeah, you got one momentum. Um, um, I'm going to keep the momentum. I mean, I, I'm, I'm willing to spend it, but I think uh, I mean, I've got a relationship with Alex, so it's just my suspicious side, which is taking okay. over. Rolling. Mm. An eight and a four, two successes. Nice. This is not a setup. That's clear from his face. He was as shaken as you guys were when this was happening. He was in the same state of panic. It was real. Okay, I'm really troubled by that. I'm going to start looking again through the window and reload my uh, my pistol. Okay, so well, do you think there's any way you could maybe supply us with some some type of gear? I mean, if this is and and you can tell now that uh, that uh, Ward is trying to get on topic to like give him something to think about other than what just happened. 
Um, but, you know, if we need to pull this off, then um, you got any, like, silencers, things like that? Because uh, we need to keep things quiet. We need to keep them quiet. I, I don't yet. That's the snag. This ah. is almost a kind of trial run for to to prove to uh, the major that we're a, we're an effective investigative fighting force. Until uh, then, maybe I, maybe I could pull a string or two back at home base. I don't know. Maybe I'd make a call. Maybe. Uh, what worries me is that. Uh, that's all going to arrive a bit too late. You see, the chartered plane's in a couple of days. No, oh, that's true. Okay. Elsie, you've not said anything in a while. Elsie has kind of returned to her place at the table. I imagine she's just shoving her face full of bread. And she just... Look, it's... It's, it's all above my head. I drive. I fly. That's what I do. I don't know anything about magic as far as I was concerned. That stuff was about bunnies in hats. This is ridiculous. This is nonsense. But I'll fly your planes. I'll drive your cars. I'll get you where you need to be. But good God, don't ask me to understand what's happening. I mean, some of it's about bunnies in hats. What? Never mind. It's a stupid joke. Uh, let's, let's eat something at least, chums, shall we? And you guys slowly, with trepidation, settle back down to dinner. The rest of the evening is uneventful. Um, after dinner, um, you'll spend time in the drawing room, um, smoking cigarettes, drinking, talking amongst yourselves, getting to know each other a little bit better. In the next couple of days, uh, the plane is prepped. The one you came in from uh, on, Elsie, um, mm -hmm. and that is prepped at Biggin Hill RAF base. And you guys are all driven up there on the day of the flight. Um, and the plane is chartered directly to Vienna. Vienna's airport is a fairly new uh, construction. Um, and is also doubling up as a uh, Luftwaffe base at the moment. Um, as you fly over the channel for the first time and into mainland Europe, some incredible sights uh, come uh, at you from the cockpit um, as you go uh, over the uh, kind of that uh, middle area of France with a beautiful undulating countryside and then you just on the horizon start to pick out the French Alps that lead into then um, kind of Switzerland and as you bank round further towards, towards the north slowly but surely um, in uh, the kind of uh, it's not really a valley as such but you, you can see to the to the north and to the east the Austrian Alps as you descend down towards uh, Vienna, which is at this time under German occupation. Uh, as it used to be the capital, it currently is no longer. Um, it's essentially uh, been taken over as all of the kind of governmental um, kind of things, the army particularly, everything is reporting back to um, Germany. Um, uh, as it's taken back over in 1938 um, by the Germans um, and this is de, uh, termed the Anschluss uh, which I believe is something like it's the return or something like that possibly um, as you descend down uh, into towards the um, airport which is uh, a mile or so out of town just in the distance you can see the architecture it's an odd mix of the kind of baroque and the modern and there are some recent housing development complexes of these kind of fairly large for the time apartment blocks um, as well as on the southeastern side of the city you see an expansive park where um, not only is there beautiful green space um, and uh, kind of uh, concrete walking areas, but there's also an amusement park with a beautiful Ferris wheel there. In the centre of town is the much more older town, which is kind of behind the very ancient walls of the, of the um, old city. 
Um, and the climate is um, a beautiful, warm uh, summer. Um, you can see on a clear day the Austrian Alps, as I said, to the north uh, and to the east, just there. Um, and as you get on your um, information from the um, control towers that is conveniently being translated for you either through Sophia or through George. Um, you get that it's a uh, hot, it's dry, but there is a uh, nice breeze coming off um, the northeast, so from the Alps. Um, and as you step off um, the aircraft, you get a beautiful sense of the fresh Alpine air coming down from those Alps. Um, the airport itself, um, you um, probably would have been worried about uh, your entry into uh, occupied Austria. Um, but the Austrian uh, kind of civilian air forces here at least are ten fairly casual about things. Um, Vienna is still a cosmopolitan tourist destination more German now in terms of their clientele because uh, with the Anschluss, so many German tourists came down to sample Austria's incredible culture. Um, it was never a big industrial city. So there's plenty of art, plenty of architecture, plenty of, uh, you know, beautiful food and everything like that to sample as well. So with the convenience of uh, a hotel, organized by Alec and uh, tourists uh, as your kind of disguise, uh, you head on into Vienna. Uh, now you've got about um, a day before you are due to meet with um, Gisela. Um, and by telegram, um, Alec lets you know that that has been arranged um, for a, a coffee shop the Cafe Google Hoof, uh, which I believe, if I get my map right, is in the kind of southeastern part of the uh, old uh, old town, right in the center, okay. uh, just near the Danube, just a couple of streets away. Okay, um, well, Ward, would, Ward would want to go and <clears throat> in this day before we go down there, at least go and have a look around to see, you know, entrances, exits, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, you guys you don't, go anywhere without, you, you don't go anywhere without me uh, in this town because your life uh, is my life and all the lives guys so if you want to go there there's the two of us alright well uh, let's go then so you head over to the cafe just to wreck it um, so I would like you guys to roll for me who uh, so Captain, you're kind of leading the task, I would say, or leading the skill test, and the other guys assisting. So, George, you can assist. Um, uh, is he leading, though? Are you leading, though? Uh... Wait, so he's the one <laughs> wanting to do the observation. Um, and you're assisting. In my eyes, you're assisting by being there as a bit of cover and also kind of pointing out a bit of the different art European architecture that he's not used to. Um, well, you tell me what uh, uh, George is going to protest a bit. Uh, it, it's up to you uh, or, or much you're, you're willing to uh, to lead that or and or force and force the hand to, of George or or instead. Uh, no, so I'll Louis. let you guys. I'll, you know, what, I'll let you guys figure it out. But you bear I, in I mind you're in. Way. Yeah, yeah. But you bear in mind here. You guys are in an Austrian street. Uh, as tourists, you speak mm -hmm. German, but he doesn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, we discussed yeah. that before being in the street. Uh, okay, uh, cool. The, so how do, you guys, but, how do you guys want to go about this? As a player, I'm fine with well, both. It's just my character would protest, that's all. Well, I'll tell you what, George, uh, since you can speak the language, yeah, you can go ahead and take the lead on this. Uh, we just need to look around, see what's around here. Uh, if there's any... Uh, Exits, alleyways, things like that. Don't need to speak the language to look around. So, George is gonna still give you a few instructions, like tell you to change your posture, uh, 
hold your cigarette differently between your fingers rather than on the top little mannerism which are which which are tells that you are not from around here according to him all right cool okay so uh callum i want you to what are you using for to, to lead this test in terms of attributes and in terms of skills so I'm going to use my talent facing the crowd. <laughs> cool. And and then I'm going to use uh, stealth, urban stealth, and uh, attributes. Uh, would that be reason? I, I try to be very methodical uh, about what I what I do. Uh, I'm not I'm not improvising. I'm really doing stuff I've been doing uh, repeatedly. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm happy with all of that, man. Yeah. Okay, so reason plus urban uh, plus stealth, that's 13. I've got the focus urban stealth, and I got face in the crowd. When relevant enemies attempting observation test, so uh, I leave that to you, but uh, that's a little bonus. Cool, all right. Uh, na, 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 na. So, uh, uh, do we want to put momentum in that, uh, Captain? So, as a new scene, you guys uh, will have dropped uh, momentum from the last scene. Did we start? We left the scene with two, I think. With one. Because I used one, one for. Uh, yeah, I bought yeah, one. Yeah, we did one. Yeah. Okay, so we no longer have any momentum at the start of the oh. scene. Okay, what well, that said, all. Okay. So, two dice. So, am I rolling also to assist? Yeah, so you will roll 1d20, and you can make up your own target number from your own attribute and skill, depending on what you, you're using. Um, on so would this be this. more reason or coordination, would you say? You can argue the point with me. I, I'm happy I would, to take either. I would, I, would, I, would co I would argue coordination plus tactics, because I have a focus in leadership. Mm -hmm. And um, what I like to do is I like to have a problem that people like to to answer or to uh, figure out, uh, which we have here, our esteemed colleague, George, who loves to uh, infiltrate uh, enemy territory. And so, uh, yeah, you just, you just lead them to where they already want to go. Nice. Okay, cool. Right, you roll that for me. And, uh, yeah, so that's, yeah, 1d20. So what, is my, what does my focus give me? So your focus will increase the, 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 the critical success range. Um, that's right. So, uh, what is your skill rating for tactics? My skill rating is tactics of three. Cool. So, if you roll a three, two, or a one, you'll get two successes on that one die that you're rolling. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Uh, ooh, just under my number. So, so, I have a coordination of 10, tactics of three, so it's a 13. So, I got Perfect. one success. So, you've got a success. Callum, if you want to roll your two D20s, you can give me a threat if you want to. Um, you want to roll three d20s? Yeah, let's let's give you a threat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, three dice, uh, rolling under uh, thirteen, and I've got a focus with four in stealth. So okay, I'll let the math to you. Let's roll. Okay, I got two five. So are these critical success? What's your rating in stealth? Four. Then no, they are not. Sorry. So, two successes. Is the 14 equal or lower than your whole target number? Uh, no, just above. I got 13. Just above. Okay. So, two, three successes in total. So, this was a difficulty zero test. I forgot to say that at the start, but difficulty zero means that you're going to get momentum for every single success that you, you get, right? So, with those successes, you can ask me questions about the scene or about the cafe. So, what do you guys like to um, ask me? Well, I guess... Captain, we would have discussed before and what were the objectives, so what do you think should have been our questions? Um, I would think it's, uh, we need to know about like proximity to any um, base of operations on the Germans part uh, mm -hmm. that this ca cafe ha is or has or whatever. Um, and need to pay attention to see if uh, how many German, pa how many uh, German officer patrons come here they come here like I'm, I would assume they're walking around in uniform and 
Yeah, you do see a couple now and again. Mm -hmm. uh, probably just on your, on your, you do a couple of rounds, going around just observing this kind of thing, and you see a couple of guards in German uniform, um, actually patrolling the street. And it's just just once they come down the the, the kind of main um, thoroughfare. That's there. Okay, that's good. If uh, I can so for the so that's two questions, or is that one question? Oh, I, I gave you that for free. I was we were just kind of chatting about the, the guards. Okay. Uh, but if you wanted to know, for example, like uh, whether the clientele was particularly German or whether it was actually more local or something like that, like that, I'm, I'm, that's a question. I think, that, me. I think that would be a solid question. Cool. Okay. So inside the cl uh, clientele um, are uh, particularly Austrian. They wear uh, what um, George, you recognize, and Sophia a bit from um, some kind of pictures picking up from magazines and picking up some, some, of your, some of your German as well. They're wearing very traditional Austrian clothes. Lederhosen as well as uh, the kind of, you know, uh, different shirts and, and, and hats and stuff. Um, it looks in a sense because you can pick out the German clientele because they're looking a bit more modern, a little bit more fashionable. They look a bit touristy, a bit like you guys, I guess. But they also kind of they they have a they have a look when they when they when they glance over at the Austrian locals as if kind of uh, uh, looking down on them a bit, kind of a bit patronizing. But the Austrians they're quite laissez faire about things like you know, they don't care. In a way, for them, this, what they're wearing, how they're acting, it's a bit of a joke on the Germans. Um, and that's the kind of sense you get from the clientele in the cafe. Okay. Um, a question I'd like uh, to have an answer for is a bit specific. Uh, I'd like to engage with a, a German person patrolling a, a soldier or someone uh, from a militia and uh, you know ask for a fire exchange a cigarette and start talking that uh, I'm happy they're there to bring order and I'm a sim Austrian sympathizer and uh, so all our things fellow and I'm just gonna chat with him I'd like to uh, work out out of him the name of his commanding officer, or something I could use later. Oh, okay. I'm going to create a thing now. Chat, if you're quicker on Google, I need a German commander's name. I mean, you can just tell me you, <laughs> you give it to me. And I mean, the, the patrols are often, how hard it is for him. On the pretense of asking well, how hard it is for him, uh, that's what I want. The that's battle. a lot of questions, man. Did you want yeah, 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 the yeah, commander, yeah. or did you want the patrol, or did you want something else? The commander, commander. Okay. German surname chat. You give me some gold here. I've got a little common list. Muller, Schmidt, Schneider, <laughs> Fischer. Oh my god, we literally, they're almost like it's listing Tinker Taylor soldiers by here. This is crazy. <laughs> hey, Taylor is Schneider. There you go. Heigl. Uh, thanks, Bog. Axtinger. Reinhardt. Like. Mm. I kind of, I like Axtinger. I like that. Mm. Axtinger. 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 Ram. That's cool. <laughs> I'm going to go with Axiger. 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 Helmut Schmidt. Nice. Uh, yes, so we're going to go with um, Axiger, is the commander oh, yeah. of the local garrison. Okay, awesome. There is one more question, or you can bank the momentum. I say we bank it. Yeah. True, Captain. Awesome. 
Uh, what are the rest of you guys doing just in prep for the meeting? Um, I, I'd like to talk to uh, Sophia and Elsie while mm -hmm. the, uh, the boys are off doing their thing um, and say, I, considering what happened at the house, I would really like to go and see the reading club because I wonder if we're not going to be getting a full picture. We are speaking to a woman who has just lost her fiance. She's not mm. going to want to paint him in a bad light. Perhaps you would like to come with, we can go down there and see what's been going on. At least we might know if she over or under exaggerates some of his exploits. Yeah, I mean, I, I want to go with you anyway, because uh, it's helpful to have at least someone who's trained in some sort of weaponry. You know, you two are civilians. Just in case. I mean, you know, a place with a load of books, I'm not expecting things to pop off, but then again, I wasn't expecting crystals to spread out of the ground and engulf me while I was trying to eat my salmon. So, yeah. That is um, absolutely fair. <laughs> Yeah, Sophia's looking a little bit green from like the the the, pl the air travel. It's her first time on a plane, so she's looking a little bit a little bit like worn out. Elsie like pats you really hard on the back and says, "Deep breaths, love. Yeah. Deep breaths. Yeah. <laughs> In and out." It's just, it still feels like it's moving on the ground. Um, but yeah, that sounds like a wonderful idea. Of getting you know to collaborate some sort of uh, what's going on, not relying on someone who we don't know exactly. The reliability. Also, I can take care of myself. I should probably also come clean with you as well, Constance. Can you grab me the? Uh, she points to her bag and just kind of key hand me the um, open up the Hellenistic World book in there. Uh, I I reach in and take it out and hand it to you. Oh, open it up. I open there the book, is, looking really confused. Like halfway through, there's like a hollowed out thing. There's like there's a concealed pistol in the in the book. I, 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 as soon as I see it, I stop opening it any further and just go, that looks like a very interesting book, Sophia. I'm sure you yes. will tell me all about it later at the hotel. I shall tell you. Yeah, we have a lot to talk about. I haven't been exactly forthcoming as well, so. Well, neither have I, so that makes two of us. I guess that's why we're mm -hmm. related. <laughs> Wait, you two are related? Yes. Sisters. Oh. Not close then, I take it. We work a lot. Yeah, I mean, most of my time is spent in the research. I don't come out very often. Yeah. These southerners are a weird lot. But uh, where is this place? And uh, oh. we'll, we'll get... While well, the boys are out doing whatever it is they're doing. Sam, do I know what this place is? You don't know where this place is, but you could spend some time looking around. Um, Sophia could ask some people um, yeah. if you wanted to do that. Yeah, I imagine Sophia's doing, doing the, she's doing the full tourist thing, just grabbing as many like guidebooks and stuff as possible, and just <laughs> nice, trying nice. to do research. Half half bits of show, half of like it's partially shown, partially for real, because she has no idea where she is. <laughs> cool, uh, I like that. Um, so, uh, uh, essentially, I think this is just going to take some time for you guys. Uh, I'm not going to ask for a uh, test or anything like that. Uh, you eventually find uh, the Sphinx Reading Club uh, because, Constance, you recognize the symbol of the club. It's of uh, a kind of a Sphinx uh, that it looks like it's holding up a book um, almost on a lectern um, uh, and then it's kind of surrounded by stars. Let me get up the little handout thingy I've got here as well too. Ooh. Wow, I get meowed at. Ooh. Cool. Uh, and, and one more question. Do I know anybody mm. here? You don't know. Okay. No. Um, the club itself is uh, housed in uh, what, what looks like a kind of old uh, private residence. Um, 
and it's on the gates of Heaven Street, essentially. It's quite near the Ministry of Finance, so it's right near the very old town where all the kind of government buildings are um, or were, um, and certainly where all of the much older architecture is in the town. Um, how would you guys like to approach this? I will pull my handbag close to me, which has my handgun in it. <laughs> uh, but I will let Constance and Sophia take the lead. This is not my territory, it's not my domain. Sure. Um, I will, I mean, I don't know if I would know of a greeting or anything like that they have, but I will walk up to the door and just knock and wait for someone to come and answer. Uh, okay. A uh, young woman, receptionist, um, opens the door just ajar and asks in German, yes, can I help you? Um, I'll, I'm going to... Um, yes, yeah. we'll kind of like translate for... <laughs> I'll, for, I'll um, stutter for a minute as I'm like... Uh, and just look at you and be like... Oh, she... Could you... Yeah, I just like... I just look at the um, the person that opened just kind of look and then just kind of translate for uh, Constance. Okay, Constance, what do you want to say? Um, I'm going to say uh, I've come here seeking to speak to somebody about one of your members. I come from the London branch of the club. Uh, when you say that, uh, she asks. Uh, which member and uh, have you got the card, the membership card? Do I have a membership card? You do not. I do not. The, so the club meets in your shop but you're not necessarily right. a member and um, the people that you know are in the London branch. Can I name drop someone important to try and convince her to not ask me for that? You can try without much of the knowledge. This is going to be a bit of a stab in the dark, just from what you've heard in the meetings or maybe some of the kind of minutes that you've looked over or something like that. This yeah. is going to be a persuasion test. So um, we're going to set a difficulty here of five. A oh, five. Wow. So you know that momentum we just got? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me just bring up the point. Yes. Right. Oh, I mean, I'm all for that. Sophia, you will assist here. Constance, yes. you're going to be uh, speaking. It's five because of the name drop, and you're the one speaking and having to do the kind of name dropping, and it's predominantly in English, whereas you need a translator for it too. Right, okay. Uh, in which case, can I just double check? Did we earn some momentum in the last bit? Because I don't think I wrote it down. So has You've somebody got else... one momentum because we banked one. We asked two questions and banked one. Okay, right? yes, then I have got it. In which case, are you guys okay if I give Sam some threat for this? It's, cool. It's, yes. In that yeah, case, I, cool. I will buy three extra dice. I won't spend the momentum. I'll keep that in case someone else wants it, but I will give you six threat. All right. So I'm on 18 threat now. <laughs> to spend some uh, minutes. Um, does... Uh, so, oh, this is persu persuasion and will or reason. This is will, because cool. I th I think I think you're lacking in some of the knowledge here that you need to really do this. Okay, that's that's fine. We're gonna try this, guys. We're gonna see what happens. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk and kind of dodge around the membership card thing and start being like, oh, so and so. You know, I'm just gonna name drop somebody who I think is really important. Uh, you know, be like, I should have come down and visited, and you know, we, we were just we just happened to uh, be passing through this way to go somewhere. Just a proper bullshit story, but name droppers it, hoping that they're going to be like, oh yeah, come in. Sure. Let's see. Uh, so my thing is thirteen. So it's one, two, so it's three, and then if. Uh, Sophia, Sophia is you'll assisting. assist with one d20, and this will be persuasion again. 
Um, okay. It can be reason if you want, or it can be will, depending. Oh, um, reason. I think let me try. Try and um, pop it up a little bit. Let's see, reason and persuasion. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. So twelve. My thing is thirteen, and that's one d, one d twenty. All right. Oh, nice. Cool. Four successes. Not quite enough. <laughs> is that right? So, yeah. you got fortune, remember? Do you want to re-roll? I'll re-roll one. Cool, Go just on. the one. Uh, I'll spend the last of my fortune and re-roll two of those, because I actually think this could be... Could well, be you can, so it's not just one die. If you spend your fortune, you can pick oh. as many out of the pool as you want to re-roll. Oh. In that case, I will pick the two that are not successes. That's the Which 17 a, and the 14, 14 right? 14, yeah. Cool. Let's roll, roll two for me. Yay! Boom. Six successes. As you oh, are grasping for some name, some person that you maybe met in London, someone who you saw on the minutes, uh, an attendee, you realize, of course, that the person that you're here to investigate is a member of this book club, and their name is Dr. Ehrlichman. And so you name drop Dr. Ehrlichman. And she says, oh, yeah, so, okay, come in. Um, I need to take a very brief break myself, but I will be back in just a minute. Talk amongst yourselves, folks. <laughs> be right back. So, hey, about that splitting the party, huh, in, in yeah. oh, Vienna, yeah. in, in, you know, it, when it's occupied uh, by, by the I Germans, mean, and, and we're super obviously tourists. I mean, tourists that kind of know German, so maybe, maybe, maybe. <laughs> maybe you flip it around so much. I mean, uh, you're like, it's too obvious, they cannot be a spy or work for the government. A group of five, I think, is more, especially like three women who are clearly not attached to the men they're with. Yeah. It's probably mm. far more suspicious than us three ladies wandering around on the street. Yeah. No, and this is true. I, that's what I'm hoping, anyway. I, just, I mean, we... Some, yeah, yeah, the two of us just look, look so academic -y looking, like, just like, yeah, Sophia just kind of just is covered in like, yeah, kind of like this, just like covered in like sweaters and stuff like that. So it just looks like someone just dragged her out of like a, like a research area or something. She's just scarves and sweaters. <laughs> <laughs> so just all in the there'd be nothing there. Since we are in Vienna, a little bit of a movie recommendation, uh, which was brought up by uh, Caro Emd. I really mm -hmm. recommend The Third Man, which technically is not a World War II movie. It is set after World War II as uh, yeah, uh, life in Vienna is difficult. Uh, some criminals are swapping around uh, penicillin. And uh, it's mm -hmm. a very cool movie with a great soundtrack, which uh, well, myself and apparently a few people in the chat had in their head as soon as Vienna was mentioned a little air of mandoline which uh, which is quite famous you might have heard uh, it mm. yeah nice so just because we didn't really do it at the time what does everybody look like mm. so yeah uh brown hair blue eyes um around 160 pounds uh, five feet point eight um big Chevron moustache. Cotton Constance uh, is very it's kind of typical 1930s, so she's got a very nice dress on, but it's not, it's got, she's not like, patterned, it's quite like one colour with a small belt um, mm -hmm. and occasionally kind of a hat, keeping with that kind of women should keep their hair covered thing. Um, mm -hmm. And carries uh, a small like black leather handbag which she just has it's just got like if you looked in it it's just like a diary and like scraps of paper and pens and pencils and stuff um, so if you looked in it you would see just a vortex with uh, nothing <laughs> <laughs> no that's back in my suitcase at the hotel <laughs> i mean where yeah, else do you keep your vortex, vortex? Yeah. yeah i mean that that might be that is a thing i kind of want to do if we do end up going back to the hotel is 
warding some stuff because I'm scared creepy things are going to happen again. <laughs> So Sam, we won the war, we found everything, we've beaten all the Nazi, and uh, everything yeah. is great. Oh, it, mate. Go and, home. And we've made Sherman president, so... Job done. Yes. Oh, and, yeah. and we've got three momentum left. Sweet. I was going to ask what Sherman was doing on your travels. Well, here's the thing. Did we bring Sherman with us? It's entirely up to you. I like to imagine that Elsie didn't willingly bring Sherman with them, but he was in the plane, and she didn't realize he was in the plane until they like they were over France or something. She's like, oh, God, I brought the dog. Oh, sure. <laughs> like, what's that noise? What's that noise? <laughs> it's just now in the hotel. It's a little <gasps> That's Amazing. what our cover could have been. I could have been walking the dog. <laughs> Although I'd probably a book club would not like a dog hanging around. The secretary oh, does kind of <laughs> as you walk by <laughs> with this little with this little dog just trotting along. I wonder <laughs> if fat common doggies were in Vienna in nineteen thirty nine. The only queen. I don't you know. You might be surprised. Probably a few, yeah. Okay. You enter this um Fairly dark and dusty, uh, what well, essentially just looks like a library. Um, because this is in a kind of old private residence, it's um, not so much uh, very kind of public space. It's actually built around so that there are more kind of smaller private spaces divided by either uh, bookshelves back to back bookcases back to back or um, more like a cozy kind of British pub in a sense of kind of big long high back leather chairs um, a little a little fireplace going for posterity even in 20 degree you know heat in us in, in August um, and there are a handful of members in here um, not only are there those kind of more cozier corners where there are chairs set up um, with so little positions where you could debate and um, research and such there are also desks that you can see on a, a second floor a kind of mezzanine um, where I mean there are actually those kind of thick um, wooden desks those really heavy old ones with the green leather top um, some looking nice and more modern maybe they've been brought in some looking a little bit older and uh, tatty um, in over right deeper into the library deeper into one of the smaller areas where the bookshelves are there is an elderly gentleman with thinning snowy white hair uh, very neatly trimmed goatee um, and he wears what looks to be a fairly comfortable tweed suit. Um, a little bit out of place here in Austria with that, but he is nonetheless just flicking through a couple of books. Um, you can see he's got just a little palm-sized pad that he is also just jotting a few things down in, in pencil. Um, up on the balcony, uh, you can also see a uh, fairly kind of younger gentleman um, he um, stands quite tall um, and straight is talking to a colleague um, Sophia you get a sense he is also fairly well spoken as well um, but they seem to be getting on very well he seems to be quite charismatic too in, in that sense um, he's uh, yeah, slightly underweight but otherwise um, not really remarkable as such um, he's clean shaven uh, has a cigarette in his right hand um, and he's playing with his cigarette case between his fingers and the palm of his left hand in the other. Uh, what would you guys okay. like to do? Now we are in here. Um, mm -hmm. What I want to do is find out if... Uh, I can't remember his name. I'm so bad with names. Uh, Ehrlichman. Yes, oh. if Dr. Ehrlichman had a, like a desk here or an area that was his because um, I want to rifle through. And I, I will play, since I name-dropped and get him here, I'll pr if I have to, if somebody doesn't immediately kind of 
take me there. I'll probably name drop the, oh, we were such good friends and we lost contact. I was very sorry to hear about his passing. He always said I should look at his research. That kind of, I'm here on academic business kind sure. of thing. Uh, who are you doing this to? Who are you getting to, I'm gonna who, go who you the, name drop? I'm going to go for the, the charismatic guy upstairs. And I'm going to start the conversation by asking if, uh, I can, if I can, um, you know, borrow a, a like a light for a, a cigarette or something. Are you asking in English or are you bringing Sophia along? I'll, I'll bring Sophia. I'll, I mean, we'll all go up together. I think, mm -hmm. um, I do kind of want to be, try and be fancy though. Cause I, I want, I'm hoping that. What language was he speaking when we heard it? Was he speaking German? Um, you could hear what you assume would be German, yeah, from where you are. Okay. Um, I'll I'll try and talk to him in English. Okay. I'll, I'll pull out a cigarette and just ask, "Do you have a light?" He looks at you and speaks a little bit of German to you. Uh, I'm going to look over at Sophia. Very so like. Uh, I just, so he I asked. said. So yeah. So so you asked him in English. He said, uh, "What? I uh, I don't speak English." Oh, he doesn't speak English. Um, I just I just I I look back at him and just like she doesn't speak German. I'm here to. Uh, help her with that. She's here for, we're here for some re for research for Dr. Ehrlichman. Ehrlichman? Ah, uh, yes. Terrible shame. Um, what? Um, I mean, I might be able to help. He used to sit over there. Uh, I just want to ask, is it okay if we have a look through some of his effects? He always said that I should come down and see some of his research and admittedly I never quite made it across to, to see what see what he was doing and this is kind of my last opportunity um, I, I guess so um, his I believe his desk is uh, some of it's locked so I'm not sure that we could look through um, and he looks at you, Sophia, um, all the while he's been talking, doesn't actually really um, look at Constance, even though she's the one mm -hmm. kind yeah, of just, leading it's, the it's discussion. An odd, like it from like outside, it looks a little odd. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, and he's like, um, I mean, why are you here? Um, where is we were. We're his research partners. We're we're here to uh, pick up some of his look, to help him out. But we haven't. We're here to retrieve that items. And we unfortunately do not have the key for whatever reference materials he had. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, what? Where is the key? Do you uh, do you know, or do you know how maybe to get someone who who can get inside his desk? I'm like I. You see, I, I like she. 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 She just, she just kind of like just starts looking like flustered. Like I, we had it here, but this was the flight. I must have misplaced it. She like just starts like throwing like books and stuff on the on the table and like, it's like I, I misplaced it. And we, uh, we're on a timetable. He. Any assistance would be helpful. We can we can provide any sort of writer names. I mean, maybe you ask uh, Helena down at the reception, but uh, I do not believe they have a spare key. Oh, no. Um, and I, I, I um, translate that to um, Constance, just saying, like, well, uh, in we, the meantime, maybe... Oh, go just, ahead. We'll just see if, if he did leave any of the research that we need uh, not locked away um, and we can perhaps the keys in the hotel room and we can come back if we do manage to find it as you guys are talking 
um, just as the kind of as the as the bit of the translation goes on and such. Uh, Elsie, because you've got a bit of kind of you've got a spare attention to to mm -hmm. lend to this as well. But you all notice that as you guys are talking and trying to f and trying to arrange this, he is looking each and every one of you subtly up and down and mm -hmm. the more he waits the quicker he plays with his cigarette case yeah and, I, I mean he, while the... he is he, he is careful and he's it's not it's not shifty eyes looking between you he is looking at each one of you just considering what's going on mm-hmm uh, while these two were talking to him, I would have liked to have been uh, like doing a low-key sort of scan of the room of the people in there. So um, I would have been paying attention to like what they were doing as well. Like, so if anybody was conspicuously like looking at us and then moving away, or you know, talking amongst themselves or in hushed tones. Or, so cool. Okay. Um, so I uh, am going to ask you to roll. So this is going to be insight. We've got insight mm -hmm. in this game, right? Yep. <laughs> We've got two games. They, use, they all use slightly different versions of this. Uh, so insight uh, and observation, definitely. Uh, any focuses for you in there? No. Hearing insight? No. Okay, cool. No worries. And uh, this would be difficulty one. I am going to spend some of my threat. I'm going to spend four threat to make this difficulty three as some of the other patrons just just kind of start like bumping in your way it's a darker space and you're not quite getting like clear recon that you'd like mm -hmm. you know okay so difficulty three okay so um how much momentum do we have i don't think i think we might someone have. needs to keep uh, a count two. <laughs> two. we have two I, i've got i've got a count on my character sheet okay cool. so we have two momentum I mean, so I'd buy you one and a half dice. <laughs> if you want to spend it, spend it, because we'll get it back. Yeah. So yeah, let's let's spend it. So that will be three dice I'm rolling. Yeah. So you spend one one momentum for that extra die. So you've still mm -hmm. got one in the bank then, right? Yeah. I can count. Sweet. Cool. Roll those three D twenty for me. <laughs> Oh, one crit oh, success. Oh, natural crit. There you go. But two fails. Do those do those those fifteens don't help you out? Okay. No, so you've not. you've got two six. You got two successes right now. You need three. Mm -hmm. Do you want to spend a fortune point to reroll those fifteens? Yes. All right. I'll, so, I'll do it. With your pluck and determination, you're dodging your way around these patrons, making sure you get a clear eye on who and what is going on here. Oh, that that's one success! You oh. Yes! There you go, yes. right? So, as you are looking around the um, upper floor, you notice that there are a couple of other um, fairly athletic guys uh, mm -hmm. in suits at the bookshelves more towards the back of this mezzanine uh, they are looking through the bookshelves um, they're taking some notes but they are also occasionally glancing up at you and then looking back down and it is that keep checking back to see what mm -hmm. your you guys are doing hmm okay I will um, I will hold on to this information right at this moment um, but I'll wait until these two are done speaking to the gentleman, and I'll be, I'll be so, you know, casually just perusing shells with my hands neatly tucked behind my back, making sure not to touch anything, but um, definitely keeping an eye on what's happening and being aware. Uh, I am going to spend two threat, because I've just come up with something cool, uh, oh, no. to introduce a complication that I think we, we avoided earlier or something, but Tetley starts to <gasps> growl at one of these guys really starts to prop up audibly now as well and people are people are, are looking at you i just sort of like pull his lead back and i'm trying to quiet him down i'm like shut up shut up dog <laughs> um okay so one of the guys that was glancing towards you 
starts to step forward. Telly gets even more aggravated at this point, starts yapping at this guy. This guy does not look phased at all. Mm -hmm. Says something to the dog in German and then yells downstairs over the mezzanine uh, kind of balcony um, at the receptionist who looks up and shakes her head and walks up to you guys. She brushes past the two the two sisters, you two, mm -hmm. um, and so you notice her just pass by. Um, and she asks you politely but firmly um, something in German. And she, she, she motions towards the front door. No! <laughs> Um, um, okay, I just say, um, I attempt to say sorry in German, it's very broken. <laughs> it's like, uh, I, I'm supposed to say like, es tut mir leid, but I'm like, es tut, uh, uh, and I will quickly like, go up to the sisters and be like, um, <clears throat> just whisper in, uh, Sophia's ear. Mm -hmm. Someone's paying attention to us. Just be careful. Be as quick as you can. And then I'll be very apologetic as I make my way. I'm like, I'm sorry. And like, make my way out of the, uh, yeah. with the dog. Cool. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, so the receptionist guys, you right to the front door and then closes it behind you. Mm hmm. Sophia just like, just looks at the gentleman who says, has. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm dreadfully sorry. I know this is this is a research. But I didn't know that she was bringing this dog in here. Apologies. Um, yeah, we'll 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 make the go through. It. We'll find we'll find um, Dr. Eklund here, and we will come back. I'm I'm apologies. I'm, I'm very sorry. Sam. Yeah. So one of the spends that I'm seeing here for fortune points is make it happen. So you can introduce a new truth. Um, that no one has noticed something no one has noticed yet or a piece of equipment you thought you didn't have but actually do yes, can, can i spend my last fortune point to have it so that um townsend had given us the key like it had been sent to him for safekeeping that's a biggie um and i uh oh yes you can it's, it's up to you i'm just i'm just asking i'm just flicking through to see I mean, things are still going to go terribly wrong, but... <laughs> yeah, so... Bear with me, audience. I need to do a little bit of reading. <laughs> if not, uh, it's fine. I was just... <laughs> I mean, you totally can, and I don't want to say no. That's that's the point. That's the point. Um, Okie dokie. Okay, yeah, okay, I've got it. I'm going to change this up a little bit. Because what are pre-written adventures for, right? Apart from changing completely. I'm sorry, am I breaking your game? <laughs> it's not my game, it's fine. Uh, okay, so while the cats just try and destroy my house, uh, I need to show you guys this. Uh, if I can. What's going on here? Here we go. Thank you, Fantasy Grounds. Right, we've got... You, you rifle through the drawers, um, there aren't any research notes remaining, aside from one uh, page. And actually, Sophia, it's something that you do that just strikes you at the time as I've been, I've been taught, we've been told, if I wanted to hide a little message, if I wanted to, to keep something here without people thinking uh, that, that they can easily get to it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put it above and just kind of slot it inside the top of the drawer. So as you reach into the drawer and at the top there is a there is a sheet of paper there um, that's just stuck a little bit with the spots of glue in the corners. You just mm -hmm. carefully prise it out of the drawer yeah. and you have the manuscript page there for the lovely people watching do you want someone want to try and give that a read for me i i can do it if you want unless someone else wants to yeah go ahead it has long been my intention to investigate further the stories told to me by my mentor her uh dr Abudoff, regarding the discoveries made in says i i'm so bad with foreign words i'm sorry uh before the great war and now with the 
burgeoning interest in our Germanic history and inheritance, I feel this is the perfect time to embark upon this journey wherever it may take me. But each journey begins with a small step, and I must first like, take the dog, D-O-G, archives, and retrieve the notes he made on the Black Stone and its strange tales of the descendants of a lost civilization. Perhaps those stories were the misrememberings of an old man. As a scholar, I feel I cannot ignore what could be a very important lead in the quest to discover the truth behind our Aryan heritage. The boxes should be in, and then it trails off. You guys have the manuscript paper there. Mm -hmm. As you uh, pick this up, and Sophia, presumably first of all, the one reading it in German, you still mm -hmm. uh, just heeding Elsie's advice, have a little glance around, Constance. You see the gentleman you spoke to and two other gentlemen more further into the library on this side and on this um level all staring at you i'm gonna grab like some other papers that look like they might have just been like his musings and writings and like just take those rifle through them really quickly pull out a couple of pages go oh, I, th I think we found it uh we can we can probably head now and leave these people to i think we've disturbed enough don't you sophia yes um if you if you can find any more information, I I write down um, an address of like one of the other ho other hotels. It's like we're at this address. If you can find us. Uh, sorry okay. to bother you with a dog. No, it's fine. I like dogs. All right, I'll yeah, fold up okay. the the random bit of paper and kind of put it thank in my handbag much. and walk out with Sophia. Yep. Thank you for being much helpful. Thanks. It's okay. And he just watched as you leave. Can I make Again. a mental note to remember that guy's face? You absolutely can. Um, he is <coughs> pretty Aryan in appearance, as it was titled back then. Blonde hair, um, blue eyes. Uh, as I said, um, he is tall, uh, slightly underweight, um, otherwise fairly unremarkable. Mm. Um, he's dressed fairly well, but you get the impression that fairly well is what he can afford rather than I've got some money and this is my casual wear. Um, clean shaven. Um, and as I said, got this silver cigarette case that he's been playing with is in his left hand. Um, and as you leave, he douses the, rem the remainder of his cigarette into an ashtray on his desk and you meet Elsie outside okay um, I kind of like we start walking away it's like I gave them the address to another hotel we need to walk that way Good move. but we have to we have to walk around circle around before we go back just keep an out keep public don't mm -hmm. go down any mm -hmm. any alleys and act like everything's normal Cool, so I guess we just try and make sure they're not following us. Is that what we're going for? And just making our way back to our hotel or back to the guys? Yes. Back to our hotel, but from like a circular route. Yeah, just yeah. kind of wander like wander around so they we don't go directly there. Well, so thanks for my some of my research um, for the spy game. I uh, like there's some genuine field craft here we can do, which is called creating a theme. So whenever you want to either try and follow someone or you want to try and not look conspicuous or try and lose um, someone who is following you, um, a theme is whatever you want it to be. So a theme, for example, for me could be shopping for comic books. I'm using that in order to create a front for what I'm actually doing, which is maybe some surveillance or something like that. So with that in mind, what kind of theme do you guys want to try and pursue, particularly in this scene? You guys have already got this kind of thing about being tourists or whatever, but like what, what's within these last couple of streets and you're trying to circle around the block a couple of times. There you go, Callum, he's got his little book out. <laughs> yeah. what, do you, what, do you want to, what do you want to be doing for your theme? What if maybe we, we are like... like Ladies at lunch, you know, we're off like a little Look afternoon for nice. walk. Look yeah. for nice 
nice coffee place or a little bistro or something yeah yeah, yeah. just like checking okay. out so... menus as we go and mm -hmm. just like being fairly like just whipping out the kind of like the, having the little guidebook open and just kind of like you know yeah. being very touristy yeah proudly trying sherman in front of us <laughs> very cool uh, who wants to? We, we are going to roll for this. Who wants to lead the task here? Who wants to be the main person for this? Um, do you mind? If I no, no, go I think you're the, okay, I yeah. think you're the perfect yeah. person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. yeah. Mm -hmm. And you've got yeah, that like, little edge of training as well. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Uh, yeah. So, what attribute and skill do you want to use for this? Hmm. Um. I think uh, it would probably be reason, I think. Cool. Reason yep. or insight or yeah. Either I'm willing to take a like the, the the great thing about this is that you can you can kind of argue the point. You spell like, well if if it's reason then I'm thinking about my training and I'm trying to implement that. If it's insight, then you're using the natural environment to your advantage by your kind of wisdom and your reading of the scene or, you know, brawn could be just trying to pace it out and get get there faster than them. You know, it could be could be anything. Yeah, I, I think I'm I'm gonna use reason and just by, you know, kind of like using the guidebook to kind of like keep our path kind of toward yeah, open areas toward like where the cafe are just kind of like not getting lost and just kind of like talking and then just kind of like um, interspersing a little bit of like German, just asking people where like, you know, good cafe and stuff like that is. Nice. What skill do you want to use? Mm. Something like tactics or uh, stealth? I... Um, I'm going to actually, can I use sight and just kind of like just kind of look at places that i kind of want to go and then just kind of like veer us toward there yeah so observation just and keep... sight is the focus yeah just like in yeah. in concert with like looking at the map and stuff like that and kind of like looking at the guidebook and kind of like trying like keeping and i where we are awesome okay so us. so add those up as your target number for your d20s you'll be rolling two and you can buy some more if you want to okay the other two um, how are you guys helping this out? Now, I'm looking for different suggestions, different combinations here to actually get the assist. I I would like to use reason and observation with my instincts focus to see if there's, like, now that it's been pointing out to me that, like, people have been a bit shifty, I want to see if I spot any of those people so that I can let Sophia know, um, perhaps in one of, you know, like a, you know, another language or like a word that she would know in something like Latin or one of the ancient languages. It's just a phrase in passing with that look that says like, there's someone over there, let's not go that way. Sure, yeah, you can you can improvise that. And that, that will be the success or failure of your of your um, thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this insight though, rather than reason. Cool. This is you taking in more information than Sophia is actually leading you guys to where she wants to go. Elsie, how are you helping? So Elsie would be using her training from the WEF, uh, like that. There's like a level of military training where it's like how to how to integrate and and be amongst foreigners and a not make a fool of yourself and a not make a fool of Britain. So Elsie would be looking back on that, and I feel like she'd be using like reasons self to try and like blend in with the people and try and and not stand out too much. I'm gonna call this coordination and stuff. Oh, coordination! Oh, that's even better. Cool. Yeah, so I'll take go. that. Yeah, I'll take that. <laughs> Sweet. Okay. So, uh, Constance and Elsie are rolling one d20 each. You can't buy any more because you're assist. Sophia, mm -hmm. you're rolling two d20. Do you want to buy any more dice? I think we should buy at least one. I think two. Yeah. Yeah. We've yeah, got, you got, we've any got more? momentum. You got momentum, right? Okay. So, well, let's mm -hmm. let's spend that one momentum and then let's. Let's roll three dice. All right. All right. That's good. Okay. Uh, my target was 14. Nice. Uh, so I'm going to roll. Uh -oh. So 
So for the um, the crits, is it at the at the focus or under the focus? Mm -hmm. Equal or under? At... Okay, yep. So one, it's two successes and one critical success. Perfect. So that's four in total. Constance, is that another success? That is for me. Yeah. Elsie, I'm guessing that's not. No, I like to imagine the reason why she breaks it is because she sees a menu and sees how much a cup of coffee costs. And she goes, how much? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like the Yorkshire just comes out. <laughs> just oh, perfect. That's perfect. Oh, man. Uh, so, yeah, I am going to roll here. I'm looking for... Okie dokie. And I am going to spend... I've got some threat remaining, right? Yeah. I'm going to spend three to roll four. Okay, so that is two successes versus your five. So you guys have successfully managed to slip away and you have bagged yourselves three momentum. I heard a bling. Someone did a thing, right? That was a thing on in chat. Yeah, uh, Mr. Pokey donated 2,500 bits for a mount for me. <laughs> a mount. <laughs> okay. It's not going to be a Laros unicorn. Back to the boys. Uh, there is a... Uh, <laughs> a German Gestapo officer pulls up outside the cafe <clears throat> on a... What I assume is a Mercedes bike, a uh, motorbike, Mercedes Benz, BMW, BMW. That was it. It's all BMWs. Um, it's this like, you know, beautiful thing. He is essentially a kind of like Nazi biker dude. Um, dismounts, fixes his hat with the skull on the front. Straightens out his uh, black uniform and walks into the cafe. You have a mount. There you go. Steal that bike. Steal that bike. <clears throat> Stealing from a Nazi doesn't count. It's not bad. <laughs> that's, that's very true. Think of all the but cool also... stuff Elsie could do to it. <laughs> the... <laughs> Put cannons on it. That is true. But the, the tactical side of, of war would be like, don't do that because <laughs> when trying to engage in a clandestine operation, you tend to not want to break the law right before doing that, thus drawing attention to yourself. Um, hmm. But you're right, stealing from a Nazi does not count. Those are words to live by. Uh, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so, uh, where do we need to go? Uh, we are, are we done here? Looks like uh, it's getting a little crowded as he uh, kind of eyes the the Nazi, uh, the Gestapo officer that walked in. Yeah. Well, uh, let's move on. Uh, I don't like leaving the others on their own. Uh, we shouldn't split the party. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <clears throat> and we'll go ahead and uh, start making our way back to the uh, to the hotel now that we have finished surveilling the area cool do you want to grab the bike uh, I, this is pure RP this could probably come up later but no I'm not going to steal a bike right right now but what I will do is I will go down on one foot and go to tie my shoe and pop the little air cap off and let the air out of his back tire <laughs> yes um, that is cranking Nazis. At least I'll that do that. That is going to happen, man. That is going to happen. Um, but not all the way, just a little ways, so he can still drive on it for a bit. And maybe it'll pop on him while he's uh, driving. Um, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so it's not noticeable. I, 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 I think George, when he, he sees you going this way, he hands you a knife discreetly. <laughs> and then, it's and then I cut the brake line also. <laughs> <laughs> Key that Nazi bike. <laughs> yeah. the, 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 thing with, the thing with those bikes, um, the the braking wires are quite weak. <gasps> That's good to know. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, once we do that, we'll we'll go ahead and head on. All right, perfect. 
You guys nonchalantly walk away from the bike, head down to uh, the kind of north, uh, sorry, the southwestern end of the kind of uh, more central Vienna uh, to your hotel. Yeah, it's essentially a, a kind of posh little B&B, um, better breakfast type establishment that um, Alec has set you up in. Um, you guys presumably will have checked in earlier before you went around, had a little look and stuff. Um, so you head straight on up to uh, your rooms. Um, the sisters are uh, presumably, I would say, probably sharing a twin room. Um, and then it's a fight between the three of you as to who gets the single room and who gets the twin <laughs> with, the, with the other. Well, I, I mean, I think I Elsie and, should I'm probably in. have the single room. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Lord, Elsie, Lord Elsie, that. El Elsie has one bed. Tetley has the other. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, right? Yes. <laughs> Good stuff. You, he you, could, you, you are at liberty now at this point to head down to the bar, meet, discuss, in the last of a few minutes of the session, obviously, think about what you guys want to do as your kind of plan of attack, what you've learned, maybe share a little bit of your theories of what's going on. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I'll, you I'll did what? <laughs> well, it was interesting. Back at the house uh, in Kent, it seemed like they dug up something that was called the Black Stone. It was kind of like a Rosetta Stone, but it had script that nobody could read, a weird language. And funny enough, and I hand over the note that we found, it seemed that this is what he was looking into. There's some weird stuff written in there, but it looks like he was looking for some archives. I think this was some of the digging he was doing that perhaps got him in trouble. But at least we have a lead on where to look next. Mm. And by the look on some of them blokes in that place, the uh, the trouble came from within. The, the thing about the manuscript is that it was hidden. Like, I might want to have a look at it, have maybe some help. Maybe this maybe there's something in there that we can find out maybe it's not all surface level so you're saying he was hiding stuff from his own people i think he knew that people wouldn't appreciate looking for what he was looking for for him to hide a note like that he either expected something would happen maybe or he thought that somebody would know where to look for it well i mean and he kind of looks at the Price sisters and be like, "Well, I mean, y'all, uh, y'all seem to be the brains about this kind of thing. So, what do you, uh, what do you think he was looking for? That would be so uh, ill looked upon." It looked like he was researching to things about strange cities and that that black stone, that script. There's, it's a big thing in in what we study. You know, new languages points to infinite possibilities of civilizations that we've never heard of that once existed. It's both in standard research and esotericism. It, it sounds like a Nazi uh, sympathizer when I read the uh, final lines, uh, if I understand them correctly. I mean, it's not the final lines of the full notes, but of that page. Uh, very important lead in the quest to discover the Bruch behind our Aryan heritage. That sounds like uh, he shares some ideas with uh, the people mm. in power in Germany. Mm -hmm. Well, so before we even... Is this guy an ally or an enemy? I wouldn't trust this either. guy. But judging by what yeah. happened with the glass, somebody already knows that something's going on, so... And uh, just to add to, to the festival of, of shit we've got going on, pardon my language, uh, that that guy you were talking to, Constance and Sophia, he absolutely clocked us. He was looking us up and down. He he will know our faces. So if we bump into him again, he's going to know exactly who we are. Perhaps that depends how long we're we're here for. Yeah. Well, we're here like at least tomorrow. Somebody or something knew who we were back in that house in Kent when the stuff with the glass happened. Mm -hmm. So 
rather the enemy that we know than the one that tries to encase us in crystal. So you're saying okay. that they could have been waiting on us here? Probably. If they knew where we were then, there are magics that can do that, that can see things. Well, did y'all see any, did anybody see anything where y'all were at? Did it look like anyone else was uh, keen on your uh, movements? Pretty much the whole place. We said that name, we said Ehrlichman and seemed to get their attention. Well, that changes the landscape. As far as I know, we we were not followed back. We took a complicated route to get back here. Well, I think we should probably take a complicated route tomorrow to the meeting, and maybe not all go uh, at once or together. Uh, you guys are destined for this meeting tomorrow, so if you have a plan about how you want to do that, then I can I can prep your downfall in in advance. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> My my suggestion is let's assume that uh, our three companions here, uh, three comrades, their cover is blown. Um, I would have them go to the meeting while you, uh, you my good captain, and myself, uh, we shadow them and, uh, yeah, you know, work with the idea that their cover might be blown, but maybe not ours, and be there as support while they, they do the talking. Anyway, uh, I will know what to say about those, uh, well, uh, magical stuff, uh, whatever. Well, I mean, I'm not, I'm not one for it either, so uh, it might be better if you are do the ones doing the talking to, to this, uh, this lady or whatever. Um, but yeah, I think we should. We'll stay back, stay undercover. We'll keep, we'll keep we your... Have... Uh... What's important is to have a way out. Plan something well, we... ahead of a, a way out we so can... that if things go awry, we can uh, check out mm. easily. We do have one advantage, though, that if this has rattled people because they think someone's looking, maybe somebody will make a mistake. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. let's hope so. Because they know they're not safe anymore and people panic. At least now well, we know who to look out for as well. Mm -hmm. We know if we see our charismatic friend tomorrow that we're onto something. Well, we'll also know that once we speak to his fiance, uh, if she lies about anything or any of the research that he was doing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we go there, you three meet uh, or contact. Uh, we sort of work out ahead a way out and when we leave the place uh, if something goes wrong we split uh, let's say I take uh, uh, I might take Elsie with me Captain you take Constance and Sophia with you or should we split Sophia and Constance because at right now they are sorry Elsie but they're sort of uh, assets in terms of uh, the occult well, I, I don't think we should split too much, but uh, we need to keep one uh, one native speaker uh, with each group. So I th I'll, I'll take the Price Sisters. Yeah. But yeah, we'll rendezvous uh, over here, and he'll just point at a place on the map. Like, well, take take LC and Sophia, it. and I'll take to Constance if uh, something goes wrong, and mm -hmm. let's agree on a rendezvous point. Uh, and uh, I indicate the uh, this merry-go-round at the fair in Vienna. So. It's crowded, so we could. We, if something goes wrong, we split and we meet back there afterwards, for instance. Sounds yeah. good. good. That good is plan. where we will close tonight's yeah. session. Thank you very much, guys. Oh, session sure. one. A bit sketchy. Thank a bit, bit off piece, but we got there. Yeah. Very nice. Awesome stuff. All right, well, let me bring Thanks, this Sam. to a close. No problem at all. Let me just find my little. Uh, thank you notes. Um, so if it, maybe let's just go around quickly, just remind us who you are, where you're from, and maybe just what, a little bit of what you're looking forward to in the campaign or in sessions. Pruitt, what about you? Uh, uh, well, uh, I am I am Pruitt. I'm one half of WebDM. Uh, you can find our videos on YouTube, on our channel there every Wednesday. We have Twitch games Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We're going to have another one coming up on Sunday here at the end of the month, so keep a lookout for that over on uh, Twitter. 
Uh, but you can find me at jpruink on Twitter and Instagram, and um, I am just, I can't wait for shit to go crazy because uh, I look forward to seeing how, uh, how all this shakes out once the bullets start flying, the grenades start dropping, and the tentacles start plopping. So uh, I can't wait till next week uh, where I will hopefully be in a little bit better, uh, more appropriate garb, um, but I've been a little busy this week. Oh, and you'll put me to shame. <laughs> put the cat down. Uh, Virginia, you are uh, probably going to talk to me about this all week anyway, but what are you looking forward to and where can we find you and stuff? Yeah, so I am Virginia. I am Tabletop Horde on Twitter come over and say hi sometimes i post about interesting things and I mean, sometimes uh you can also find me at the roleplay haven so if you are london based or you're based in wales uh we have clubs set up where you can come and run games and play games and raise a bunch of money for charity while doing it so you don't have to feel bad about your gaming habit anymore um yeah i'm i'm really looking forward to like personally for for constance is the moment she gets to unleash that spell when, because right now I feel yeah. like everyone's kind of like, oh, she's, you know, the, the two sisters are the ones that really can't protect themselves. And obviously I've just seen what I've seen with Sophia and nobody quite knows what Constance can do magic wise. So I'm looking forward to that moment. Um, I'm also looking forward to like all of us having that, that tea moment where like shit gets real and it's all just like, oh, okay, what do we do now? And it's like that, that team bonding moment you get in like every film where it all comes together. Because I think that's mm -hmm. going to be really epic. Yeah, we're still kind of at that exp exposition stage where we're still getting yeah. to know each other and stuff. And uh, no, that's all very, very cool. Susie, I, what I'm are you looking forward to? Uh, well, hi, I'm Susie, otherwise known as Susanna Grace. And you can find me all over the internet at Susanna Grace. That's Susanna with one N. Uh, I'm a variety streamer who does video games, art, role-playing, TTRPGs, and I'm everywhere, including in current role-play and soon-to-be WebDM on Sundays. Uh, just follow me on Twitter. All my links are on there. But I am super looking forward to, like everybody, like the moment where shit gets real, everything goes wrong. Um, there's like a high speed chase. I'm having to drive a car like Captain Ward's hanging out shooting a gun and George is out the other side shooting a gun. Sophia's out the back shooting a gun and Constance is just like flinging spells at tentacles or whatever. <laughs> I'm looking forward to just that sort of chaos. <laughs> it's coming. It's probably going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Shona, what are you looking forward to? Hey, um, Shauna, flying a series on Twitter. Um, I just have all, all my games up on Twitter and probably some art at some point. This, but yeah, I'm 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 just excited to see where this goes. It just it this was way this was way more tense than I was expecting from my session one. And I, yeah, I do want to see what everybody's like, you know, like team team moments and stuff like that. Yeah, sorry, I promised pulp, and then I brought the weird inspector. <laughs> creepiness anyway yeah more more pulp soon promise uh callum who are you what are you looking forward to etc i am callum from the rpg academy network and the host of the rollist podcast the broadly london-based show of tabletop rpg fans across the channel the pond and beyond and i'm really looking forward for uh, our characters to grow especially mine i've been playing him really rough with everyone uh but see how it becomes really brother in arms with uh, all the others and i like how just a little thing we've been doing today with uh, captain ward uh, is a bit more confident on the skills of uh, the all good captain so yeah i cannot wait for us to get close and find out each other's little secret and maybe have some uh, you know uh, intimate scenes uh personal moments of uh friendships and oh you've been through this yeah i've been through that etc but uh in pairs uh, all across the groups that's, that's going to be very cool i cannot wait to reveal things about my character bit by bit nice man nice well i am sam at Modifius, otherwise known as rpg webby on pretty much everywhere online um i am most looking forward to revealing exactly who the party just spoke to in that bookshop it's going to be ace uh so thank you everyone for watching uh we're online next week same time every friday 5 p.m eastern or 10 p.m gmt if you have any questions about acton cthulhu or any of our other Modifius games and such like that you can always reach out to us keep the conversation going at rpg 
WG Webby or at Modifius as well. So thank you all for joining us. Thank you to my lovely cast as well. Uh, we are all off. I'm going to bed. Bye. <laughs>